All right, is everybody ready? Ready to go? Okay, I'd like to call the August 17th, 2024 City of Trinidad City Council meeting to order. And to begin with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation and a God. Thank you. Uh, the council did not have a closed session this evening, so we'll just move on to our approval of tonight's agenda. So I'll start with the council. Any questions or comments about tonight's agenda? All right. Any public comments or questions regarding the council's agenda for this evening? I'm sorry, I'm picking up on the draw. Sure. Um, the minutes. Uh, I'm wondering about the minutes. Okay. Because I depend on those to be able to remember <laughs> what happened last time. Um, so I, I wonder if there's anything to be done. I think we I brought it up before. Yeah. And it just seems like there's a bottleneck somewhere. And if we could address that. Bottleneck. Yeah. <laughs> the bottleneck. The bottleneck, and I apologize. I sent a message out today. I it's just there's a I don't like to make excuses, but it's very this is just a really trying time for us. And you know, I've defaulted to the fact that we have the Zoom recording, oh, yeah. the okay. Minutes, okay. which I intend to intended to do this month, but with all the election and yeah, all the yeah, deadlines, yeah. I just struggled and it's not really something we can delegate. So I um I would just I just <gasps> ask you know, in, a, in an email I sent you guys today, just maybe your patience one more month and I'll have everything caught up. Okay. Well, because if it if it's like an ongoing bottleneck, maybe we need another solution. Uh, so. That's a really good point. I, I noticed it just kind of started in February of this year, February, March, things started to kind of pile up. And um, you know, I think it's just a, a busy year and Staffing changes, it's kind of unprecedented in my seat, Is it? you know, oh. and I, and I, the best I can. No, I'm, I'm sure you are getting, oh. I just wondered if it's something yeah. that we didn't have If you're on the uh, Zoom, could you please mute? Sorry, Katie. No, I, I was just wondering if we need another solution because I'm sure you're doing everything you can. I think, um, I, oh, we, we, we can always use new solutions. Um, <laughs> And I, I, I think we might be on track for one here as we kind of re, restaff um, as we're intending to do this. So I think that, that'll kind of help us yeah. rebalance and redistribute the workload. Okay. Um, but I but I will do everything in my power. To I, I'm not, I know. I will. And, and if it doesn't work, we can readdress it and maybe really put our heads about another solution. Sounds good. Okay, I'm going to bring it. Uh, sorry, let me continue with uh, any public comment. I'm going to take us back to the agenda for just a second. So, for tonight's agenda, are there any public comments or questions regarding the agenda for the council meeting? Okay, and then I'll bring it back to the Move council to approve tonight's agenda. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so the agenda is passed unanimously. And the next item on the agenda is the approval of tonight's minutes. And as we uh, just discussed, there will be no minutes for the pre meeting. Um, and I think we've we've discussed that. Um, so I will not open to public comments because there are no minutes. Um, let me move on then to council and committee reports. And uh, who would like to start? I vote for Jack. Okay, <laughs> I, I second. That's Steve's on the council. <laughs> I only have a couple more of these, so I gotta I know. make good use of all of this. <laughs> all right, um, uh, there was no HCOG meeting, so I didn't do that. Um, I want to just talk a little bit about trails. We got kind of uh, stalled because we're trying to get posts, figure out the post situation, and we have the ranch is offered to help us get through that. Um, we also have one of our members working on um, a, a better way to put trails in. We've got some ideas. But summer also has created a lot of other activities and things going on. So we have talked about meeting as soon as the Rancheria has a little more time. They're going to meet with us, and uh, we'll bring we'll bring more information back. Hopefully, yeah, in the next month, if we can, if everything goes well, we can come up with some more information about where we're going with the trails. And those are the 
posts in the local trails that just are within Trinidad. It has nothing to do with the actual neighboring or, uh, or any of the other trails that are coming that were that were cities working. So these are the other trails. So hopefully we'll have something going. We do have some ideas. Um, the other thing I want to mention is if you didn't get to come to the T Bam concert, any of the T Bam concerts over the last two weekends, you missed a really good show. They um, they were absolutely outstanding. All the, all the ones I went to, and a lot of people were very were very happy about uh, the various artists. Their the quality was absolutely fantastic. Some of these people are great. So if you haven't been to a T Bam concert, um, you should look into it and try to get get to it next year. But uh, they were the ones I went to were absolutely fantastic. Well worth uh, the time to to do that between the civic the civic club helps out, um, so I get to go in there and be a bartender. They <laughs> must need for plastic concerts. <laughs> so one second, I went to the T Band twice. I had not been before. Oh my God, it was just I was charmed. I was just absolutely transported. It was wonderful musicianship and a glass of wine and some uh, macaroons didn't hurt. <laughs> So, so uh, in the future, uh, watch for this and please, please attend. It's a good, it's a good performance. Katie, do you want to? Um, we haven't met since the last meeting, but we have been working on the um, uh, letter of introduction of this, the Animal Advisory Committee, and getting that all ready. And uh, Jack Thomas ordered the. Uh, refrigerator magnets, which will have uh, the town hall and the animal control phone numbers on it. And we're about ready to send that out. Uh, and then we'll, we have a meeting plan for September. Um, the Humble Transit Authority uh, met this month and we got a presentation from uh, folks from the county about the sales tax that they're proposing uh, for the November ballot. And I just found it to be a very informative, um, I, you know, another tax is another tax, right? Everybody has their feelings about that. But what I did learn that I wanted to make sure folks know was that this came about because the state can take property taxes that the city and the county would use for roads. And so this is a way of, of ensuring that our roads and our transportation, because it was a humble transit authority, that our, our public transportation and our roads are actually paid for with the money that we collect and get to use solely for that. And there are three different levels of sort of community and staff and uh, fiscal oversight, how the money is spent. But for that penny a year, penny a dollar, um, we'll have about $24 million a year as a county to fix our roads, keep our public transportation uh, running. And so I just wanted folks to know that this, there's, this is not just coming out of, out of thin air that the, the, Proposal, I think, is worth everyone looking into. So I just want to pass that on. Redwood Region Economic Development did meet, um, but nothing relevant to Trinidad to report. All right, thank you. you. Uh, I just have a quick one. The Community Emergency Response Team met on July 22nd. I wanted to thank the radio team. Uh, Richard Johnson is the leader, so he'll keep me honest on the quick report out. but. Um, the two damaged antennas on the firehouse have been replaced and the antennas were tested, um, but the radials on the MFJ 80 millimeter to six millimeter antenna may need to be tweaked for optimum performance. So sorry, getting to a little technical there, but um, anyway, the team is going to participate in a statewide OES, um, the Office of Emergency Services event on August 22nd. Uh, so uh, so yeah, so brand new antennas on the firehouse. Is there anything I missed, Richard? Okay. Uh, and Brian Brown presented firefighting basics to the CERT team uh, and all the kind of firefighting protocols. It was a great refresher. Upcoming seminars are gonna be Stop the Bleed, which will be open to the public, and Animal Welfare in Emergencies also will be open to the public. We don't have dates yet. And then we'll also be doing some sort of a fall disaster drill. We have not decided which disaster yet, but there are plenty to choose from. So <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna look at that. Um, tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon, I'm attending the LAFCO city selection meeting. So I wanted to mention this to Steve and Jack. Um, 
I think you were on point, Steve, and mm -hmm. then Jackie were the alternate. So I just wanted to bring this up. I don't know if anyone, I know you guys are going to be leading the council with the next election cycle. So Jack Tuttle's not here. I don't know, Katie, if you have an interest in being, that they meet every two months. Um, I need to, I guess, find someone from the council to participate. So it could be me, it could be you, uh, or Jack Tuttle. I would just say that it's important for Trinidad to have someone on LAFCO only because we've been discussing um, annexation over the last two years, and it's LAFCO that leads that process. So yeah. if Trinidad wants to have uh, a say in annexation, now is the time to be on LAFCO. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm fine with being on point unless, but if you want to, Katie, I definitely would. If I could, I, I would. Okay. I can't. Okay. And their right. meetings, I want to say, are midday. I, I can't remember. Oh, that uh, could be it. When the meetings are. Too. They are during the day, though. Okay. So Yeah, um, and they only meet, I believe, every two months. So yeah. Part is, yeah. I, I think I, so I'll go ahead and, unless someone, and we have, we have to have somebody from our state, correct? I mean, it would be Ideally. helpful, yeah. yeah. Okay. Look at well, I'm just checking because I wasn't sure what the what no no we don't it, it doesn't it, there's no requirement for Trinidad to be on it but it's only open to city governments and because again just because we've been talking about it, yeah it would be nice if we're part of that discussion okay all right thanks for that you guys because I since I have that meeting tomorrow I thought I'd just cover it here um, the Trinidad Town Hall rehab meeting uh, we're gonna we have a team a little uh, focus a little task force I should say that's uh, gonna work on rehabbing the town hall, the painting and various things and replacing windows mm -hmm. and so forth. So mm -hmm. we'll meet tomorrow. Now that we have the, um, have streamlined the contractor, contractor procurement process, um, that'll be a good, I think we'll be able to come up with some next steps. So that's it for that. Are there any public comments or questions about the council or committee reports? All right, uh, with that, then we're going to move on to items from the floor. And at this time, members of the public can. Uh, oh, staff, staff report? Staff, staff report. Staff report. Did I skip staff report? I checked the box too soon. <laughs> I apologize, Eli, That's please. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. I need to apologize to Lieutenant McCall. So I'll <laughs> turn it over to Lieutenant McCall. Hi, good evening. Yeah, hello, thank you. No problem. Um, so I will start off with saying we had a, a computer issue, so I do not have the stats for the greater Trinidad area that uh, encompasses obviously a lot of the, the outlying area of Trinidad there that falls within the, the um, you know, would be county jurisdiction. Um, they were, our IT was working on that today, but apparently they weren't able to get that resolved before, um, before I, I headed home. So I do not have those for you. That being said, I do have these stats for the month of July for uh, the you know within the city of, of Trinidad itself. Um, nothing of, of real note on there that I'm seeing. Uh, for July, we had a total of 43 incidents uh, inside the city. Nine of those, so almost a quarter of them were transferred to other agencies. So that would be like things like a transfer to like medical or fire or, or combination thereof. Uh, four alarm calls. Four uh, designated Trinidad patrol calls. We had three domestic violence incidents for the month of July, uh, a couple of animal problems, a couple of patrol checks, a couple of public assist and restraining order violations, as well as a couple of suspicious circumstances and welfare check calls. And then we had one each of a bunch of other kind of, you know, for the most part, again, non uh uh, nothing of, of major note, like 911 hang up, abandoned vehicle, uh, a missing person that was resolved, um, uh, dispatch report, follow up, lost juvenile, which was resolved, parking violation, uh, one petty theft, and one suspicious vehicle. So, uh, nothing that's that's standing out as uh, uh, major items of, of concern or showing any kind of uh, um, uptick uh, or issue with any particular criminal activity that I'm seeing from this one, at least as far as inside the, the city of Trinidad itself. Again, without having those for that outline area, which obviously can trickle in and, and kind of affect the overall quality of life anywhere surrounding it. I don't have those numbers, but I'm not aware of anything also standing out from that as well either um, occurring in the last month. Um, that being said, I was off for a couple of weeks this last month. So if there's anything anybody's aware of or any any questions regarding that, I'm more than happy to try and answer that or, or be what assistance I can. 
Any questions for Lieutenant McCall? No, it sounds like uh, it was pretty quiet, so that's always good. I agreed. Any public comments or questions for Lieutenant McCall? All right, I'll bring it back to the council then and to you, Eli, for staff report. Thank you, Lieutenant McCall, for joining us. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, so my staff report uh, in the uh, packet, uh, first of all, the ACIP project, uh, which is uh, including crosswalks on Edwards, guardrails, striping, traffic calming improvements, and expanded pedestrian and bicyclist improvements. This would be in a variety of streets. Uh, RAO Construction is doing the work, <laughs> and currently they're uh, on, on right by Memphis at the corner of View and Main Street uh, doing work there. Uh, the water tank and pipeline project, uh, the water tank is being delayed until October 1st, uh, where they will start uh, deconstructing the current uh, one of the current tanks that we do have, uh, 150,000 gallon tank, uh, which is Redwood, and then uh, eventually replacing it with a 250,000 uh, stainless steel water tank. Uh, then the uh, water plant, uh, one of the intake pumps at the water treatment plant is being replaced. Uh, it uh, failed. And the uh, discharge measurement from Luffenholz Creek uh, is, was that the last reading, July 26, 4.57 CFS, which is good for this time of the year. And uh, mid-August, we'll do another reading. And the uh, June invoice from Coleman Engineering was 11,535. And the July invoice was 8,270. This additional information was requested from a resident as to the uh, water treatment plant. And uh, the, re the question was uh, if we did receive any hours yet uh, that were billed to the city by Cohen Engineering for the month of August, and the answer is no. Uh, and also the current total amount charged, let's see, so that, that's, I'm going to do that separately. Um, the other question was a detailed description of services rendered by both Coleman Engineering and Pacific Watershed Associates. Uh, regarding Coleman Engineering, uh, the uh, invoices basically talk about water plant operation and reports to the state regarding the water plant. Then I'll just continue with the uh, staff report and then get back to the other questions that were asked by one of our residents. The uh, water rates, a mailing was done on July 23rd to all water customers in the city, informing them of a proposed water rate change and the Proposition 218 process. Uh, customers are given 45 days if they wish to protest the proposed rates. And the letter spells out that written protests must be submitted by U.S. mail or at the town hall with original signature uh, from the owner and or uh, property resident. Also the date and address of the property and, and affirmation. And then next month on September 10th, we'll be holding a uh, public hearing uh, where the council will consider, uh, number one, uh, the responses we've received from the water customers, and number two, about the proposed water rate and, and the implementation of it. The other item is uh, the school playground and track. This has surfaced recently where some residents wanted to utilize it, realized that uh, it was not accessible to the residents. So tomorrow, uh, we're having a meeting uh, with the school and their JPA insurance school representative 
as well as our JPA insurance pool representative. So we could try to assess the status of insurance coverage in order to allow the playground and the track to be open to the public outside of school hours. And also optimum cable channels added uh, because of the change, unfortunately, I was very disappointed to hear about the Pac-12, which happened a year ago. And as a result, uh, now there's going to be the ACC network and the Big Ten network. So uh, Optimum Cable uh, has uh, added those to their value TV package and also moved their location in the select uh, TV lineups. And the Trinidad Coastal Land Trust uh, has uh, had several trivia nights and they have another one coming up on August 27th from six to eight here in the town hall. Uh, last month's topics uh, included geology, wildlife, and a wild card topic. And uh, it's a donation to the land trust and at the same time, uh, a drink and pizza uh, are available. And then attachments to the staff report include the water sold and the water loss, and also the recruitments for city manager and for chief plant operator. <laughs> Going back to the resident questions regarding Pacific Watershed Associates. Um, so the current question was current total amount charged by Pacific Watershed Associates. And the, the answer is zero. Uh, the last billing they gave us was December of 2023. Uh, they appear to just charge us, at least for the last couple of years, uh, they're charging us uh, at the end of the year. Uh, so the total amount at the end of the year of 2023 was 21,910 uh, for that calendar year. The other question was, what is the hourly rate charged uh, to the city by Pacific Watershed Associates? Uh, they range, uh, one of their employees is 100, another one's 108, another one's 131, and another one's 159. It depends on the class of the individual and if they're uh, a scientist and, and so on. And, uh, as far as a little more detail about what Pacific Watershed Associates did uh, for the 21,910 for last year, the uh, description, a little more detailed description is uh, based upon the billing invoices. So one of them is integration of the bypass flow telemeter uh, with data analytics platform. Uh, so we have that at the water plant, the telemeter. So that was done. And then another one that was completed was our uh, regular aging and low flow stream monitoring, which uh, we had uh, just recently done it. And uh, it will be happening again in August. Come on, uh, I'm gonna give you a little more to eat. And then the uh, other invoice was as needed geological and hydrological services. And uh, this was based upon uh, certain items done with Luffenholz Creek and the water treatment plant and, uh, and uh, with the proposed uh, storage tanks for raw water storage. And then the last invoice was regarding the LSAA uh, acquisition of the city of Trinidad water rights. So that's called the Lake and Steam Stream Bed uh, Alteration Agreement. And that was required by the state and that was completed uh, by PWA. Uh, so in addition to that, I did want to mention uh, that the county uh, along with the other cities, uh, has been working on a regional climate action plan. Uh, and as a result, a 30-day public review period will begin tomorrow, August 14th, through Friday, September 13th. And uh, 
Then they're going to be having a public meeting in the Warfinger building in Eureka uh, with the consultants on Tuesday, September 10th at 6 p.m., which is exactly our council meeting. Maybe other people in the public might uh, want to attend. And then the other item, I sent the email. I just received it today and forwarded to uh, all the council members. The uh, Cal Cities is having a roundtable discussion for uh, mayors and council members tomorrow at 12 p.m. Uh, usually those run like maybe an hour to an hour and a half. Uh, we're saying it's a great opportunity to discuss uh, certain issues uh, dealing with cities. So that's all I have. And I'll help en entertain and answer any questions. Eli? Yes. Uh, do, you, do I understand correctly that you're meeting tomorrow with the insurance people about the uh, school playground or, and uh, right. asphalt it is with the idea to see if we can get proper insurance so people can use it after hours? Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we used to have that arranged in the past. And for some reason, there's a glitch right now. So we'll try to figure out what that is and hopefully be able to iron it out. Wait, any other questions from the council for Eli? All right, are there any public questions or comments regarding the staff report? Please come to the podium if you don't mind. Ladies, um, I'd like to follow up on the public comment that was requested for the water and that stuff. Um, I requested the invoices in a written public um, Made a request over two months ago. We haven't seen any of those invoices. And too many saying that the invoices are just about uh, what they've done at the water plant aren't sufficient. I'd like to see the exact invoices okay. and what the fees were that are attached to those invoices. And staff, is that we have that information and I remember Tom uh, requesting it. Is that something we can provide to him? Okay, yeah. so and we'll get back to you, Tom. Apologies that. Yeah, two months is exactly all the legal guidelines for the public request. Yeah, yes. Thank you. Other public comments regarding the staff report or any questions? Okay, seeing none, then we will uh, now go to items from the floor. At this time, members of the public can come and to the podium or comment via Zoom on things that are not on tonight's agenda. So anything else that's on your mind? Okay, all right, well with that, I see no uh, public comments. So we'll bring it back to the council to uh, review the cons tonight's consent agenda. And any questions or comments from the council on tonight's consent? All right, I have none as well, so let's go to the public. Any questions or comments about the consent agenda? All right, is there, I'll bring it back to the council. Is there a motion? Move to approve consent. Second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, tonight's consent agenda then is approved, which brings us to the first item on tonight's agenda, which I'm personally very excited about, which is the presentation discussion from our community survey results. So Eli, I don't know if you want to uh, introduce that. I know Jennifer's gonna be presenting tonight for us, but. Okay. Yeah, so um, city council uh, spearheaded by our mayor, Cheryl Kelly, uh, and then also spearheaded by our short term, uh, you know, the committee with the short term rentals. Uh, which uh, is currently no longer in existence, but they had requested uh, to have a survey. So uh, we ended up not only having an SDR survey, which was included as part of this, but also the idea to have a community-wide survey, uh, which uh, seemed uh, quite successful as far as we had quite a few people respond, I believe over 60, uh, which uh, is fairly good when uh, you're a city that uh, is like around 309. And that's all the residents, and these are basically by households. Uh, so, and, and we have approximately 225 households within the city. So that was uh, over 25%, probably 30%. 
So Jennifer Haken that was the lead person in putting the survey together and sending it out. And she's gonna make a little presentation about the results. So we conducted the community survey. We conducted the community survey beginning in April. And we originally planned to run it through the beginning part of May. We ended up extending it a little bit further to get a wider range of results. Um, the survey included general questions as well as the topic, um, as Eli explained, regarding short term rentals. Um, it was a web based survey that included a QR code, and then we also mailed hard copy surveys to every resident in the city um, via US Postal Service. The city received um, a total of 67 um, responses back mostly via online, but we received paper copies as well, which were entered into the database as well. Um, we received 11 of those 67 responses were from outside the city residents from the greater Trinidad area, but we kept those responses um, as part of the survey as well. A couple things we learned from the survey was we did need to um, extend the deadline to get more responses. Um, we reached out peer-to-peer, um, -peer, one on one to try and encourage more people to respond. Um, another thing we learned was during the survey that it required two address lines um, in the survey, which prompted some people to have some problems, excuse me, completing the survey. So that is a takeaway for next time. And we think that we could get um, Shorter, more frequent surveys may be effective next time in the future. So what you're going to see with each slide is the exact results um, to each question that was on the survey. This first one is um, the survey question was overall, how would you rate the quality of life here in Trinidad? And as you can see, most people responded to excellent, good, fair, and poor. For your knowledge, one person out of the 67 commented that they feel they have a poor quality of life here in Trinidad. Two reported that they feel fair, while the remaining people felt that they had an excellent or good quality of life in Trinidad. These were some of the top comments that people felt when we had a follow-up question, which was free form, that they could actually comment what they felt that we could do to improve their quality of life. And these were the top um, groupings of comments that um, more than several people commented that they felt like we could do to improve their quality of life, which was pedestrian safety, um, especially on Edward Street was a very common theme. Um, traffic calming was needed. Um, people wanted us to enforce the leash laws. Um, well over 10 people to this question asked that we reinstate the full-time city police force to help address crime and theft. Um, people wanted to see more restaurants. They wanted us to keep the trails open and maintained and commented that they wanted benches to be added. Um, they wanted to reduce the water plant operational costs and wanted us to be considering Humble Bay hookup again. Um, also, the noise abatement issues and light pollution within the neighborhoods and public work improvements, such as trash cans, bike racks, um, a playground for kids, and paving the streets again. Um, the common themes when we ask what we could do to improve the quality of your life. Um, what do you value most about living in Trinidad? Some of the questions were the sense of community, natural beauty, access to recreation and trails, the quiet small town feel, rich in cultural indigenous history, and other were some of the questions that were asked. Some of the comments that we got back where very good people live here, the quiet and small town feel, family living, the fantastic school, the access to fishing, and the cultural things like music and art nights people like. 
Some of the rooms for improvement that people felt like needed to be noted were vacation rentals have grown from the dad and that it's quiet only in the off season were some of the comments that people brought to our attention. When we brought up the question of safety and how you would rate your overall sense of safety, most of the time people felt safe in Trinidad, but as you can see, at times people felt unsafe, and oftentimes there were a small percentage of people who were concerned about their safety in Trinidad. The common theme with that, again, was the increased police presence and the security patrols to reduce crime in the vacancy especially nights and weekends. They also talked about the increased traffic controls and pedestrian and bike safety and the enforcement of the leash laws once again. How do you rate your satisfaction with the overall appearance of the city? Most were satisfied, some were very satisfied, and then some were neutral. A few commented that town hall needs a facelift, which as you heard Mayor Kelly state that they we have the focus group working on that. Um, signage was an interesting one. People wanted fewer, better, more uniform, more uniform look. Uh, some people suggested a general information signboard um, and also signage on Trinidad Head. Um, they wanted the benches repaired and painted, um, wanted us to address the transient population concerns while providing resources to that population though as well was noted. Um, the curb on Edwards where the sandbags have been located and then the garden area up to where the lighthouse used to be at the intersection of Trinidad and Edwards was noted several times. People are excited for the football work. Are you happy with the quality of entertainment, events, recreation, and educational opportunities in Trinidad? Most stated yes, as you can see. Um, but people did want more family-friendly events that bring Trinidad and the local existing community that lives here together. Um, more festivals and live music, and such as yoga and other activities, and more educational opportunities um, at the town hall was noted. And are you satisfied with the opportunities to engage and provide input to the city? As you can see, it was kind of a mixed opportunity here. So some of the direct comments here were we are very satisfied with the opportunity for, to provide input but we're dissatisfied with the follow through and even acknowledgement or action on what is brought up. So as you can see, we have some areas to improve here as a city. Um, they want a faster response to emails and phone calls. Um, we need to improve on our communication, on our complaint resolution and better follow through from city administration. So how helpful is the communication you received from the city? That was definitely in the middle there with very helpful to somewhat helpful kind of being in the middle range. So how can our communication be more effective? We need to increase our email communication to residents. Email and text are more effective than snail mail. We need to publish a monthly or quarterly newsletter. And some people wanted us to set up and have there be some sort of an online forum or social presence for residents. Um, wanted us to add event calendars to the city website or set up an old fashioned announcement board outside town hall with some of the suggestions that people brought up. What are some improvements you'd like to see in the city? They were given the option to provide one to three, up to three suggestions. Um, pedestrian safety improvements were again at the top of people's list. Street paving improvements and intersection safety. 
more activities for families and young children, increased trail accessibility, keeping trails open, maintained, manage the transient population while providing resources to the population, and again, leash law enforcement. So here are some actions to address the community feedback that are currently happening um, within the city right now. So with the Trinidad HSIP Cycle 10 project, we are working on sidewalks, curves, ramps, signage, pavement striping, markings and crosswalks on Edwards, speed humps, possibly on Ocean and View, and striping on Ocean and View Avenue. We have an animal control contract with um, Humboldt County Animal Control for additional enforcement. And we do have signs posted throughout town. And we've established an animal advisory committee. For the law enforcement concerns and the dedicated sheriff, we have been in talks with them, but Humboldt County Sheriff has advice that they have no resources available to meet that new group and the data. Um, we do have a part-time contract with Pacific Security to provide enhanced security to supplement Humboldt County Sheriffs. And the trails, the Trinidad Head Trail is open and the step repair is scheduled for August. Perker Creek is open and maintained. Van Wick is currently closed because of slide and the Axel Wingburn Trail is closed and it's actually on the um, agenda for tonight for mm -hmm. discussion. The water plant operation and concerns there, we're currently actively recruiting a T3 chief plant operator and the better and more communication from the city, we invested in a new website as of 2023 and the city will work on publishing a newsletter and increase email communication over the coming months. City improvements. The Town Hall, Trinidad Town Hall Upgrade Task Force has been established, and the Pickleball Tennis Court upgrades are still planned. And we are investigating in the playground equipment for park area use. And as you heard Eli say, they are working on a meeting to the school playground um, situation as well. We also have the STR survey as part of the um, survey as well. This question was if you filed a complaint with an STR, did you receive timely follow up? As you can see, the optional response was a lot of people had not filed complaints. So this question kind of was a mixed bag and didn't really generate the results that we wish that it had. Next slide, please. This question was asking if everyone received the 24 hour emergency contact list that gets mailed out each year with the STR renewals. And most people do receive that in the mail, which we were happy to hear that it was a 24 hour um, contact equipment so they can contact the um, property managers if they have a problem with the short term rentals that are located near them. Are you aware of the good neighbor policy for Trinidad STRs? We have some work to do on this one. Um, it was kind of not as clear as we would have liked. Well, there were a lot of people who were aware of it. There were still a decent number of people who were not aware of the good neighbor policy. And then one of our last questions was asking people if they know and understand economic benefit from STRs in the form of jurors occupancy tax. And um, most people were aware of that, but that brings revenue to the city. So in summary, we have some work to do with the 24-hour emergency contact. 
jumped into the head anything that's sad? No, I mean, I think for me, uh, the thing that was really good, I, I, what we hope to get out of the community community survey was to, you know, kind of cast a wider net and get broader feedback because we don't always get a lot of people attending city council meetings, and we wanted to hear from more of of the community. So, uh, for me, I felt like a lot of the things that were brought up were very consistent with what I hear, you know, in my travels, and then also what we hear in here. So that was good. I mean, there were no real big surprises, but. I'm interested in, um, you know, comments or questions from the rest of the council. What do you guys think? Well, I thought it was a little bit of eye-opening just because there's so many good comments and sort of an endless number of comments as well. So it's going to take a long time to get through things, but there, there are so many good ideas. And of course, we can take, I mean, you have to take on some of those things and look at them. But it's going to be tough to get through everything, but I just appreciate uh, being able to look at all the ideas people have. But I think some of the ideas, we're doing some things that are starting, but I think it's really going to be nice if we can begin to uh, pick out things that we can do right away and consider things that we'd like to do. Uh, <clears throat> the overwhelming part is that there's so much we really like to do, and some of the things, just with the money we have, and we're so limited in how much we can actually take on and uh, complete, but uh, it's certainly it's nice to see. I thought there were so many good ideas in here, so I really appreciate it. But I wish, <clears throat> I would like to see that we could open this up and have people continue to come up with ideas if they, if they would like to and how we could do that would be, that might be something we could do with our, web, our web page with the city website. Well, I, I really liked all the ideas. I'd like to see us you know, get the low hanging fruit right away so that the, uh, you know, town can see we're responding. One of the things I really liked was the idea of um, an information board in front of town hall with a list of uh, the activities for the week, as well as on the website. Yeah, I, you know, I know I, I often don't go looking for what's happening and I only know because somebody tells me on the street, but it would be nice if, if Walking by town hall, there was a list of all the things happening, and and that should be you know inexpensive and and fairly uh, straightforward to keep. So that was one idea I particularly liked. Yeah, yeah, and I should point out that the verbatims are in the packet. So we we did a PowerPoint, but there's also uh, the comments that we're referring to are all listed in the packet. Steve, did you? I just agree uh, with what folks are saying, and I know that in the past the council has done a goal setting exercises uh, in front of our annual budget. And I think this is a good sort of addition to that because it did bring in more response. I mean, we had 60 responses. We didn't have 60 people at that particular council meeting. So it, I think it fits nicely with the goals that the city is, is doing. And I also like that tonight we're discussing some of the things that were part of the comment section, like suggestions. And I think you're right, Katie, if we, <laughs> If we uh, are able to act on suggestions, perhaps we'll get more suggestions because yeah. we'll be yeah. able to we'll show that, we're, like yeah, that we're able to respond. Yeah. Jack's point is, is is critical that you know that we can't do certain things we can't do as quickly as we'd like, but we can at least do some stuff. So I'm encouraged. And I appreciate uh, 60 people taking time to, out of their day to, to provide input, I really do. All right, are there uh, public comments or questions regarding the community survey? Going once, okay. <laughs> All right, thank you, Jennifer, that was terrific. I really appreciate it, thank you. Uh, our next item on the agenda is a discussion decision to appoint two council members for a future government to government consultation with the Yurok tribe and the Shirai Ancestral Society or, or TAS is the acronym. Eli, did you wanna uh, cover that for us? Yes. Uh, so the uh, city uh, in, in our discussion uh, with the uh, um, our agenda review committee uh, felt that uh, it would be helpful if we had a uh, consultation with uh, the Yurok tribe and also consultation with 
the Chirai Ancestral Society uh, to specifically talk about trails in the city. Um, so we wanted to have two council members appointed uh, that could participate uh, in those meetings that, along with staff. Okay. And I, yeah, and I, I actually brought this up because we will be talking in our next agenda item is talking about the Axel Lindgren Memorial Trail and, and we've talked about some other trails uh, in the past and I just thought it might be good for the count the two counselors to meet directly with the Shri Ancestral Society and maybe separately with the Yurok tribe, but we should assign a couple folks uh, so that we could go and have some, a, li a little bit more detailed discussions and and make plans, um, you know, help move plans forward. So anyway, that was my thought. Are there any, anyone who wants to be involved in that? <clears throat> Are you looking at the stakes to do this? How soon is this gonna come up? We don't have a date. It's more assigning folks and then we'll reach out to, to see what works. So, you know, it's likely gonna be a month or two um, to get that scheduled, I would think, but. I just spoke the book. Both of us are going to be leaving. It's going to be tough to right. have time for us to. I don't. I mean, I'd be glad to step in, but yeah, it's it's going to be. It could be very difficult. Like how fast these things get done. Yeah, and as the chair of the trails committee, you would be a good person to yeah. to have in that discussion. So maybe you know, we'll, we can kind of determine the time based on availability a bit, and also you know, from the standpoint of Taz and the Yurok tribe, it may be a while before they can be available. Tough time to tough time to put this together because there's only two people that'll have to be on for the whole yeah. time, but I'll be glad to do it this way. Yeah. Yeah. And I too think that I mean, yeah, timing is, is tough, but we should not let that get in our way. And if anything, perhaps Jack and I could continue with this role yeah. having been in it and maybe just say, you know, we're here to to kind of set it up for the next crew to come in and because yeah, this stuff is, is really important. And I, I would love to be part of it if, if the council agrees. All right, Sounds so uh, let me just ask if there are any public comments or questions. Uh, we have it on the table at this point, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, um, Jack West and Councillor Ladwig proposed for this. Okay, I see no public Hi. comment. Oh, Hello. Okay. Yes. Is that this Jackie? Is, yes, this is Jackie. Um, thank you, Mayor Kelly. I uh, fully, fully appreciate and support the council's um, uh, respect and their your diligence to enter into government to government consultation with all tribes within you know the the area is very important. The only thing I want to point out is the outcomes from consultation from those G to G meetings should be reported back out as per your consultation policy. And, you know, the, the items that are uh, regarding the trails that are of specific interest to Trinidad Rancheria, um, just want to reiterate that that information needs to come back to a public meeting. Um, and Trinidad Rancheria, you know, requests ongoing government to government consultation with the city, and we do that. But I think it's very important that we're made aware of requests and opportunities as well, and just don't want that communication to not come back to to the tribe or to the city council so that we can be aware of it. Um, as you know, the management team, we're not part of the management team at this point. So we need that communication to ensure that uh, City of Trinidad Tribal Council and tribe is uh, aware of any plans that might be being made and uh, that the input is, is able to be shared. Yes, that's a very good point. Thank you for uh, reminding us of that and um, the counselors who attend will bring back the information. The only thing I think the, that is not reported publicly, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, staff, is uh, any culture, detailed cultural assets that are discussed or uh, those are requested to be confidential. So, uh, but other than that, yes, we should report out. Uh, thank you, Jackie. 
Uh, I, one one clarification, if I could, Mayor, before yes. you move on, the you know the items of cultural significance have to do with burials and and you know the I think it's very important that the trails themselves that information should not be held in confidence unless it has to do with repatriation and, and burials within those trails. Okay. I I don't know the rules quite that well, so I'm looking to staff and they're nodding. So <laughs> thank you for, for sharing that. Thank you. Makes good sense. Okay. Hi, this is Sarah from the Tri Ancestral Society. Yes. Hi. Um, I just wanted to bring up, um, you know, because I don't know that we were aware that there was just continuous ongoing government to government meetings um, with the Rancheria or anyone else. Um, and are those getting public notices? Because I haven't seen those being reported out or public notices for ongoing meetings. I thought that they were project specific. So I'm just kind of curious about clarifying that for myself. Thank you. Yeah, that's correct. And they are project specific. We go ahead and uh, we find out uh, whenever there is a request for a meeting, then we go ahead and, and request from the council to have two representatives. And then we go ahead and have that meeting. And uh, the reason is to avoid the uh, Brown Act violation of having a standing committee. So uh, you can't have a standing committee uh, but we can have a uh, specific ad hoc committee with a particular topic area uh, or series of topics, and then appoint the council members accordingly. Hi, this is Kelly Lindgren um, with the Cherry and Social Society. I know at the last um, city council meeting, um, Cheryl Kelly um, reported out um, that there was nothing to report from the G2G meeting with the Rancheria. Yeah, so if so. Jackie's asking for things to be reported out from these upcoming meetings, why isn't there anything being reported out from their yeah, meetings? Yeah, that's absolutely Thank true. You. I did say that and and I apologize. I did not know that we would that we were supposed to report publicly from a G2G. Uh, no one corrected me in the moment, so I will um, take an action to go through my notes and report out at the next city council meeting, uh, the next city council meeting that I attend, and I, and I apologize for that. That was a miss on my part. And um, thank you for that. Um, also, there is no um, where it is posted online to see when these meetings occur. There's no minutes, and so, that needs to be included. Thank you. Yes, so we need to get those on the calendar and we will do so. Thank you. Okay, I am going to go ahead then and I guess I will make a motion that uh, Steve Ladwig and Jack West are appointed for the next G2G discussions with the Iraq tribe and TAS. Those are to be scheduled and then with the caveats that we just described in terms of report out. Is there a second? No, I second. All right, and Katie seconds. I was just going to ask if, well, I mean, it's not part of the motion, so I'll wait. Sorry, I just want, if you could call me, uh, please don't email me. It'll get lost. Uh, so for scheduling, I know it's a real challenge to schedule. Please just call me and I'll look at my calendar. I don't mean to be okay. a pain, but All right, so it could take years if I wait for my email to, okay. to get ready. All right, so staff will know to, yeah. to call Steve as well. So uh, with that, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that. And we'll. And I have a question. Yeah. Um, so am I understanding correctly? When they're G to G meetings, they are project specific. So, uh, like whatever this project is that Steve and, and Jack are going to attend, that'll be when that's done. Their uh, their appointment to the G to G is over, and the next project that is G to G, there'll be two more. Is that right? That's that's, that's I believe how we've been. Yes, that's it. correct. Sometimes for consistency, we've chosen the same counselors if the topic hasn't changed a lot. Um, but yeah, generally we've just Thank appointed you. two people and they have been more 
either project or topic specific, um, as opposed to like a monthly meeting, for example. Yeah. And and I, I yeah, I apologize. I, I thought because it was G to G, there was not a report out. So uh, I will, you know, stand corrected. Okay. And uh, All right. Mayor Kelly. Thank you. Yeah. So thank <laughs> you. Sorry, Eli, did you want to add something? Yeah, I, I, this is uh, off uh, regarding the agenda. Uh, we have uh, two representatives uh, from hum Humboldt Sanitation present for agenda item number five, which I think shouldn't take too long versus the other agenda items three and four, I think will be longer. So I'm just wondering if the council would entertain possibly moving agenda item five now and then continue with the others. Yeah, I just, I'm interested also in, um... Uh, Atlas Chirai and Social Society on for the next topic, item number three as well. So I, I wouldn't want to lose them. So Sarah and Kelly, are you available to, to if we add another five minutes or so to the agenda? I am, yes. Okay. All right. I really appreciate it. It's, it's, uh, it's kind of a moving target to, to figure out the timing on our agenda items. So. Uh, but I really appreciate you guys joining us for, for that discussion. Okay, so um, do we need to make a motion then to? Yes. Okay. I'll move that we move five uh, to three. Okay. Second. Okay, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, go ahead, Eli. We'll go ahead and uh, move to that. Okay. So uh, Humboldt Sanitation okay. has been providing the uh, waste collection and recycling services to the city uh, for a number of years, uh, well before the last contract, which was uh, signed in the year 2014. Um, in that contract, it allows for a five-year extension. And the request now, since it is 2024, and that contract is ending, that uh, we would uh, go ahead and extend it to the year 2029. Um, and then the suggestion by staff has approved the First Amendment to the Franchise Agreement for Solid Waste and Recyclable Materials Collection Services in the City of Trinidad. And we had our uh, city attorney review uh, both documents, and uh, which would be the uh, First Amendment, and then also uh, to make sure with the existing franchise agreement, which uh, was uh, not done with the current city attorney he had reviewed that and made sure that applicable sections were included in the uh, amendments. And then representatives are here in case uh, you need it. <laughs> Have any questions? Answer please. questions. Okay. Are there any questions or comments from the council? I mean, I think um, I think it's good to get our garbage picked up. So <laughs> I think that's a good thing. Bear proof canisters might be good, <laughs> but uh, any comments or questions from the public regarding uh, Humboldt Sanitation contract extension? All right, I'll bring it back to the council then. Um, is there a motion? I'll move that we accept the uh, amendment to the franchise agreement for solid waste and recyclable materials collection in the city of Trinidad. Right. I'll and, second that. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. That was expeditious. Thank you, Humboldt Sanitation, for joining us. Really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for comment? joining us. i uh, just like to make one comment. Whenever I call um, sanitation, you guys are the nicest people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so pleasant and helpful. Thank you. I will pass that on for staff. <laughs> All right, so uh, with that, we will go back to item number three, and that is the uh, discussion decision on an appeal of the Planning Commission's denial of the Coastal Development Permit 2024-09 for continued temporary closure of the Axel Lingren Memorial Trail due to unsafe conditions. Trail closure authorization is proposed for one year while the city works with stakeholders to develop and plan additional repair options uh, and this is located at ALMT APN 0420910005. And uh, am I turning this over to Trevor? 
Yeah, that would be fine. Okay. Sure. Bring it over to someone. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. On staff to give us the background, and then as I mentioned before, we do have uh, uh, we do have Kelly and Sarah Lindgren, uh, both from the Shri Ancestral Society. And so after staff, I would like to have them make a few comments for the public as well. Yes, yeah, so we, we can turn it over to uh, Trevor, our city planner. But I did want to note that uh, uh, you know, on a staff level, uh, we uh, wanted. Uh, to look at this from two aspects, of course. Uh, you know, one aspect is the short-term uh, improvements, the other aspect is the long-term improvements. And we know the long-term improvements will take a while uh, and will take some grant funding, but hopefully the short-term improvements can be done uh, with uh, city funds. And as a result, uh, even if we do throw out a particular time period, uh, the intent is to uh, mobilize uh, our uh, resources, meaning with the engineering and city engineer and drawing up plans and then getting something in place uh, as soon as practical, uh, because uh, we would like uh, eventually to have the trail open, uh, uh, you know, when, when the weather is good, uh, at any time that we can from now until uh, next year. I'll turn it over to Trevor. Thank you, Eli. Um... So just a, a little bit of background, um, probably most of you are aware it was February um, 2023 um, after significant erosion on, on the over left, um, the Ancestral Society re requested, requested to close the, the trails and, and do some restoration erosion control um, to protect those sensitive areas. Um, and so, some of those actions have, have been completed. Um, the Aptos and Red Trail remains closed. Um, we were hoping to find some short-term repair options um, that has not yet come to fruition. And I, I know it's frustrating. Um, you know, there's, there's, I'm sure there's been frustration on, on all sides. Things don't always move as, as fast as, as we hope. Um, but I can assure you that there is progress being made, and I think especially in the last few months, uh, we, we've made some, some good progress, and I think we have a, a, a real plan in place, at least a, a plan for a plan anyway. Uh, so uh, staff is requesting um, con continued closure of the Axel Lindgren Memorial Trail. Um, it does require a coastal development permit, so that's why the Planning Commission acted on it. Um, I did, because conditions have changed somewhat, I brought a new uh, coastal development permit to the Planning Commission, also open it up to appeals and, and this kind of public discussion and re-noticing. Um, so I, I did do that intentionally, because um, I think, I know the Planning Commission is also frustrated with, with the extending closures. Um, so, you know, I, the, if, you know, staff would strongly recommend that you don't, uh, you know, allow the the um, trail to reopen at, at this time. Um, there is about a ten to twelve foot almost vertical drop at the base of the trail, um, and it's unvegetated. It's got the, the erosion control jeep matting that, that's still there, um, and you know, people trying to scramble up up and down that. Um, liability for the city, it's, it's a public safety issue, and it would probably cause additional erosion. So and I, I think at this point, we don't have a lot of, of choices. Um, I do understand the city's insurance agent representative will be up here in September and we'll take a closer look and give us some additional advice. It's liability. Um, but we're coming up on the winter season anyway soon. So I think that's a good time to plan a repair. I think one of the things that we've realized, so the the uh, the ancestral society had been working on a plan under a grant um, for some significant improvements to the trail, and that includes rerouting the bottom about third hundred feet um, to the traditional alignment of the trail. Um, so at this point, they would not support um, you know, any improvements to the existing alignment. And, um, you know, one of the things that's an important factor here is that 
uh, under the city zoning ordinance and general plan policy 69, uh, there can be no soil disturbance or vegetation removal without their approval. Uh, so that is that's something to keep in mind. We can't just you know, go, go ahead with the short term repair at this point. Um, so what we're looking at is trying to do some short term improvements on the realignment to the traditional path. Um, and there's been some difficulties because of the thick vegetation and trying to get access to that area. Um, we do have a proposal from um, RCAA, who's also doing the uh, Trinidad Head Trail to go down and move vegetation along that alignment. Um, I am bringing that for a post development permit to the Planning Commission next week. Um, notice I got posted on the trail today. Um, and then that will also involve a barrier at the bottom, like like is at the existing bottom to keep people from turning up. So it's it's a little bit more complicated than we thought. Again, because of the erosion and the traditional access to the beach, um, there's been erosion there, and so it's not going to be as simple and easy as we had hoped. Um, but we have to get the vegetation cleared just so that we can see the the conditions and and so that's the plan. Um, it is in progress. Um, and I think the, in terms of the planning dis commission um, discussion, I see a number of them here um, tonight. And I think again, they're, they're frustrated with the lack of progress. And I think especially frustrated with their, um, you know, they're not really in a position to do much about it. And so I think one of the purposes of, of their vote was, was to get this before the council and to get this in your hands. Cause you, you know, you, you have that power with the, you know, directing staff and directing funding and, and, and to, to get this done. So, um, so they did vote to deny it, um, recognizing that staff was going to recommend an appeal of this decision. Um, so we did recommend that to the city council. Um, Mayor Kelly did appeal it without, you know, taking sides on, on the issue. Um, and so it is before you today. Um, we do, again, you know, we're, we're saying a year, hopefully it wouldn't be that long, but just, you know, over the winter to, to plan a repair. And then once the weather gets better in the springtime, hopefully implement that repair um, is, is what the plan is. Um, we do have a condition on there that we would provide monthly updates to both the planning commission and the city council. Um, well, this is ongoing. So um, at this point, staff is recommending that you uphold the appeal and, and reverse the planning commission's decision and continue closure of, of the trail um, at this time for a year, up to another year. All right, any questions from the council to Trevor before I uh, ask for comments from the Tri Ancestral Society as well? Uh, yeah, uh, Trevor, uh, you said that you need to get uh, the, the uh, vegetation, the um, cleared to some extent so that you can actually see if rerouting is that the idea of rerouting the toe is possible? Yeah, and I think you know the the main thing is going to be that um, the transition from the bluff to the beach because yep. there's been so much erosion and so the the traditional path exited the bluff and onto the beach on a rock and but that that rock has been separated from the bluff and. But the vegetation is so, so thick, we can't really see how the slope and things align. And so we just need to get that cleared so we can yeah. design. Uh, and it, is this clearing uh, acceptable to TAS? Yes, they, we, we met um, just before the last planning commission meeting. Um, they are fully in support of, of getting the new or the realignment, the traditional alignment open. Um, so, so yes, thank you. Right. And, and I, I just okay. want to note that, uh, um, you know, although Trevor was mentioning a year, I, I think, you know, nine months will be more than sufficient, which would take us to May. Because yeah. ideally, we can have it uh, done by May for sure. And if we can have it done earlier, I would like to see it done earlier. But at least I think nine months would be sufficient. All right, I'd like to, uh, at this point, if the Shirai Ancestral Society, I think, um, I think we'd love to hear directly from you and your, your thoughts on, on the trail. Hi, thank you so much. Um, so this is Sarah, again, <laughs> from the Shirai Ancestral Society. Um, 
Yeah. So we um, we obtained a grant uh, for a conceptual redesign, which would be long term um, plan for the trail um, to increase its longevity, uh, be able to minimize erosion and, um, you know, make it a trail that the community can be proud of again, uh, which is something that, you know, it's been lacking for quite some time now. It's been in some pretty significant disrepair, not just at the bottom, but the entire trail. Um, and so, you know, we we really would like to work towards that long-term goal, but we do understand that, you know, we've got to um, continue to work towards a short-term goal of making the trail usable again, which is something that, you know, we want to see as well. And so, um, we contacted RCAA uh, this year, at the you know, the spring of this year, and um, went out with uh, Trevor, or no, I'm sorry, I don't know if Trevor was there the second time. We went out a couple of times to do some site visits uh, with city staff. Um, and the last time we went out was in, um, was in about May and uh, they were able to go and actually walk the traditional path at the bottom that would give us that realignment um, to more stable ground than, um, than the route that has been in existence since 1997. So the RCAA was able to provide us um, at the end of May um, an estimate for that work. It's pretty reasonable cost um, and we are set to do it. The only thing we're missing is just the funding. Um, and so uh, if we can get that um, RCAA's um, work funded, then, you know, we can get that part of the project moving forward. Um, there is still some planning and discussion about um, <clears throat> connecting the toe of the bluff to the beach and doing it safely. The long-term plan takes care of it, but it's, you know, how to make the transition from short-term to long-term without creating more instability of the bluff there. And, you know, from from an outside perspective, I'm sure it's, you know, looking at it, you're like, well, we could just get some hand tools, we can, you know, move some rocks, we can put, you know, kind of that ladder system that was there before and, you know, be done with it. But, you know, unfortunately, this is a sensitive area. Um, this is a traditional path. So, um, you know, we're we're trying to go at it uh, in a in a thoughtful way to preserve um, that that historical component, um, you know, this, this is a state historic site um, and we're trying to just restore it the best we can. And we're trying to do it in a timely manner. And honestly, the thing that is slowing everything down is not the lack of a plan or a lack of, you know, meeting and deciding what's happening. It's just really a lack of funding. So, you know, if the city can dedicate funding towards this trail um, and then, you know, we've talked with city staff and um, are working with city staff on uh, looking for grants to um, to implement the uh, long term goal. Um, and you know, as long as we have time to do those things, um, you know, we're hoping to get this trail up and running in a permanent way for everyone to enjoy. Um, so, I think at this time, though, you know, asking for a year. Will it take that long? As long as we get funding, I think it could be done a lot quicker. Um, but you know that that's really up to um, you know how how the city wants to go about funding the project. All right, thank you. Eli wants to add something, and then I'll ask the council if they have. A question. Yeah, I, I just wanted to add that the the cost for the vegetation removal is four thousand six hundred and seventy four dollars, which the city can take care of. So we can do that. The the other question is getting people safely down to the beach, and it may entail some kind of a step or sectional or whatever, uh, or possibly what you saw with uh, College Cove, uh, but something. Uh, that, and once we establish what that cost is, then we'll see if we can find some funding for it. Yeah, I really think it's uh, you know so so from what I understand moving the trail back to the traditional path is where it was back in the 90s 
And, and there's no good reason not to do that because we have to fix it anyway. But, um, but yes, I just, I'll disclose that I did walk down there earlier today. I'll also just, and then looked at, I'm not an engineer, but I looked at it and it did seem to me like there might be an option for putting something behind the boulder uh, that would help bring the trail that last bit down from the bluff to the, to the beach. But I appreciate the fact that the Shri Ancestral Society has, um, has you know obtained a grant and and while while we may not have seen all the work that was going on behind the scenes and I think that's why the public has been concerned um while we might not have seen the work there is actually work being done and there is a plan there is a 38 page plan that has been produced and will be made public if it has not been I'll I'll disclose that I've seen it as of yesterday um so so i think that that's some you know it's real and there's real plans in the works and so forth so uh, i just wanted to mention that and make that comment about um what taz has just presented but are there questions or comments from the council for for sarah or kelly i just want to thank uh, sarah for, for uh, letting us know what she's doing and i think this is great that we're kind of all on board and everybody's working in the right direction so Thank you for bringing that up and letting us know what you're doing. It's, it's great to hear we're going in the right direction. Yeah. Any other comments? All right. I noticed, um, let me go to the public and I noticed, uh, Jackie, you had your hand raised. So I'm going to go to you first. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I apologize because it was really hard to hear Trevor um on my laptop and so i may be asking questions that she's already addressed so apologies ahead of time trevor but i'm wondering where the public process is in um creating the design and engineering it, there will be ground disturbance and i'm wondering if there is an opportunity or is it a categorical exclusion? Is it, how, what type of environmental document will this require? Um, and at what point will public input be taken? Uh, good questions. Um, for, for just this vegetation removal um, to get a better view of the site, and we're looking at a categorical exemption, yes, um, in terms of, um, you know, larger repairs and improvements, um, you know, that will, that will come later once we get to see the site, but this will be on the agenda at next week's planning commission meeting. Um, and uh, the rancheria is on the list of those that um, need to give approval, so we will be I'm looking for that for this this vegetation removal, but this isn't for 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 public access. Um, this part, this permit. Trevor, I heard the rancheria will, and then it cut out. Uh, we will be um, reaching out to the rancheria because that coastal development permit will require approval from the rancheria. So we will be reaching out. Wonderful. Thank you so much. All right. I would like at this point to uh, open to public comment with a reminder that uh, we are a local community and we all know one another and we like to keep things uh, respectful and, and productive. So with that, I will open to public comments. Please, Tom. Okay, once again, um, so I, I like the idea that the trail is going to be rerouted to a traditional route. I thought I'd like to to my support for that. But um, I find it's ironic that we're discussing the CDP for the trail closure when it's been kind of past practice for the city to close trails without a CDP. Now the CDP is being used. Kind of weaponized, which I've also seen some other people take the same thought process. Uh, it just keeps on being this is the way we can keep it closed. Um, 
you know, the things happening in town that don't have CDPs that access that affect coastal access, such as a, a green stripe on a curb, which is still not addressed. And to my knowledge, um, when I hear things like we've been working behind the scenes, I think that's what's developed into um, community animosity. This is a public institution here. And working behind the scenes doesn't cut it when it comes to filling in the citizenry on what is going to be done. It sounds like, from what I've heard tonight, that there have been plans made, there have been things discussed, and I am unaware of any of that ever being made public. Other than the fact that uh, multiple times public has been told that this trail will be open. Um, while all this is happening with this Wagner Street Trail is being pushed off of its traditional line by property owners, vegetation, and tree trimmings. Um, and also the city was to have a, a survey done while I was on the city council over three years ago, most likely, to determine where that property line is. And if you get on and walk that trail, you will notice that it is just being pushed way out of its traditional line. So there's, a, there's another issue of the trail in this same area. One more thing I'd like to... Um, I'm not trying to criticize anybody here. I think that you were doing something wrong, but I noticed an email in the packet from, from you, Cheryl, that was addressed to every member of the city council. And I'm not seeing any response in the packet, which I'm hoping indicates that there wasn't any response to that email, because that would indicate a serial meeting happening via email. And as we all know, that's a violation. And I would hope that that didn't happen so that we're not already having a decision that's been made behind the scenes for this to happen. Yes, so I will confirm there was no response to that email. I just want to just and that's it. throw the streets yeah. out and then as soon as people start responding, then we you know, so. Yeah. Um and that goes along with the transparency of you know what has been discussed, yeah, what has been decided upon. One question I have is I've heard that the Sarah Tri Ancestral Society gained a grant. We're also looking for funding to repair the trail. So I'm kind of curious as to what the grant pays for, maybe just planning and how the city and the, and the ancestral society are going to work together. Okay, let's see. Yeah, so we can answer. I, I'd like to make one comment about the, the, the behind the scenes. I, I think that's a, an unfortunate use of words um, that I chose. And, and I would say that the Shirai management team has been meeting and the, I wanna make it clear that the council has not been a part of that. So the Shirai management team has been meeting. So it's been a staff uh, level discussion on the Shirai management team. And uh, I'll be transparent in, that I, in saying that I have asked for those meetings to be made public uh, over the past year. The council has not been involved. I know the planning commission has, um, perhaps been under the impression that the council has been uh, attending some of those meetings um, and, and we have not. So I also wanted to let them know that. So um, staff felt that they would have more, uh, make more progress uh, and, and be able to work with the Shri Ancestral Society and the other members of the TMT. Um, and, and they would make really good progress doing it that way. The, the plans that have been developed have not been made public and I did not see them until yesterday. So now, and I'll check with all parties to make sure, but those should then uh, would now be made public uh, because they came to me essentially um, with some redaction for new cultural assets. Um, I'll note uh, as uh, Jackie had mentioned, it has to be specific cultural assets, but um, those would be removed of course. Um, and I, and so, you know, I, I feel like the council wants to be very transparent. It's why I appealed the decision. I wanted to get it at this level so we could just really have a good discussion. And I do really appreciate 
Taz being here for this and, and the Rancheria as well. So Eli, did you have something you wanted to add? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I could add uh, the, uh, from my understanding, the uh, funding that the Chirai Ancestral Society has received uh, is uh, intended for the long-term plan. Uh, yes. So we're, we're trying to address the short-term opening. And, uh, and then as far as the uh, uh, Chirai management team meetings, uh, we, what we've been doing is we've been meeting uh, to, and discussing items that uh, deal with cultural significance. And uh, we've indicated that we would like to have the meetings open whenever there are issues being discussed that do not deal with cultural significance. Thank you for um, clarifying that we had a management team meeting that are occurring without city council because we said it would happen just as recent as two weeks ago. See so, yeah, for that, so that would explain that. And um, I think that's all I needed to say. And, and if I could just uh, comment first, I, I really appreciate you starting this with you know it's great that we're returning the trail to its traditional route. Um, obviously, it was more sustainable. <laughs> in, at that old route. I can confirm I have not responded to any emails. I've not been to any TMT meeting. Just, I know I'm only one of five, but definitely want to support your interest in maintaining transparency. And I've not been part of anything. So yeah, thank I imagine the other counselors could say the same, but just for me. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Um, Hi. I uh, let's see. Any other? Thank you. Uh, they're pointing to the screen. Is someone hold oh, Sarah. Sarah was... oh, Sarah, did you want to add something? I did. I wanted to to answer a couple of those questions as well. Um, so I, I appreciate the comments um, and I appreciate the support of returning the trail to the traditional path. And, you know, it, it is our hope that it is more sustainable um, and that, you know, it can be it can be in use for a very long time without having to face some of the difficulties that um, the that the trail has faced in the direction that is going now. Um, but as far as the tri management team kind of being like a, a secret group or something, it was always um, the city manager has always reported out. Um, and that is something that, you know, we have talked about and we have encouraged. Um, so really, just like any other committee, um, the you know, the management team meetings should be being reported back out in the staff reports. Um, and I know that they used to be, I haven't paid that close of attention to, you know, if they're being reported out now, um, but it sounds like maybe that would ease some of the concerns. Um, obviously there's a lot of discussion that happens that um, the public shouldn't be privy to just because of the nature of, you know, the place that we're in. Um, but, um, as far as like trail planning and that kind of thing goes, um, the Tri Ancestral Society applied for and received, um, a grant for a conceptual design. And we spent the grant money on the conceptual design that we took to, um, uh, we did not bring it to the Tri management team, um, until, um, you know, here very recently we shared it with city staff. Um, but we had originally taken it to the Yurok tribe to see if it would even be possible to get funding and to implement the project. Um, and so, you know, the Yurok tribe has had it for a decently long time and unfortunately didn't make any forward progress with it. Um, and so that is when we then brought it to the city. Um, and um, then we are now making the document public um, because we do want input. Um, you know, our, our intention has never been to kind of circumvent the public in this or, you know, avoid feedback. First, we wanted to get a little further along in the process and make sure that it was something that was doable, um, something that we could get funding for and that, um, you know, we could see come to fruition before we brought it to the public. So, um, you know, now we are working with city staff. We are hopeful that we can make this happen. And, you know, we do, 
you know, we are going to move along through the normal planning processes of bringing it to the public, getting feedback from the public, um, and and making this a community um, a community project because it is going to affect the city. It's going to affect. Um, you know, everyone who likes to enjoy that traditional trail, right? So, you know, that's that's our goal. That was our intention. Things got a little wacky, but we're back on track now. And, um, and we do want to continue to, um, you know, make this a public uh, process. So unfortunately, the management team meetings, you know, just because of what gets discussed in there that um, that is protected. Um, you know, those aren't open to the public. And, you know, that is currently in a lawsuit. The city can talk to their attorney about, you know, what um, what is and isn't allowed to be reported out because he's been very clear about that. So, um, you know, but as much as we can share with the public, we we definitely would like to. So thank you. Thank you, Sarah. And it's a really good point. There were reports in the staff reports. Um, I think a lot of the reporting was um, in the planning commission. And so the council may not be as familiar, um, although we do watch, you know, many of us read the planning commission packets and we go to the meetings occasionally and watch um, their video. But, uh, but yeah, really good, really, really good point that the staff has been reporting out um, on the, on the progress. I think, um, I think the community will be really excited to see the the kind of preliminary plans that you've had developed. Um, I think that that makes it real. You know, a picture is worth a thousand words, and I think that will really make it real. And and I think the community will be be very supportive of the direction that that you're all heading. So, um, other public comments regarding this project, please. Uh, and Tristan Cole. Um, I guess the report from Trevor and from Sarah is all very encouraging. Um, but I'm maybe forever skeptical, but continue to be skeptical because we have received to the Planning Commission a lot of really encouraging reports from the city staff and from the TMT saying, oh yeah, we're gonna have the trail reopened by Memorial Day, yeah. July 4th, whatever. And that keeps just not coming to fruition. And there keeps being another you know, bump in the road, whatever you wanna say. And I know there's been a lot of talk. So I guess I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little bit wary of this positive news and that just by granting an extension of the closure, it sort of just like gives city staff, TMT, TAS sort of a sigh of relief and they can just go back to hoping to get in a plan together. Um, so I guess I would like the city council to somehow put a little bit more teeth in this to make, to like hold, have some accountability, I guess, because there's just, I just feel like there's been a lot of sort of hollow promises about getting the trail temporary, you know, temporarily you know, um, and then with regard to this report that is forthcoming, um, my impression is that report is a study on long-term solution to the trail. And the Planning Commission has been asking, pleading, begging for a short-term solution. And like the report is very important. I think, like Sarah said, the community is going to be stoked to see what it looks like. And and everyone is in support of that, but we really want a short-term reopening, temporary reopening of the trail so people can use the trail this summer, not, you know, I mean, I don't know what this what it looks like, but it's probably a many years long project. So I just really encourage the council to, to just make their, make their be some accountability on behalf of parts of all things. Thank you, Tristan. I'll come back to a couple of those points, I think, uh, on the council. Other public comments? Um, sorry, I don't mean to go again, but um, I would just like to remind council that there is an estimate for work from RCAA to reopen the trail. 
And the only thing standing in the way of that being implemented is funding. So I understand, you know, the frustration of feeling like there was some kind of empty promise, but honestly, um, it's just boiled down to, you know, we city staff and the management team have had um, that estimate uh, since May. I think it was May 20th that um, it was sent out to the management team and it's just literally funding that's under $5,000. Um, so, you know, there's work that can be that can be going on right now if the city can fund it. Um, and then, um, you know, Steve, um, Steve Allen uh, has been in discussion with the Tri Ancestral Society about, um, you know, simple solutions for the toe of the bluff. And when he gets back from vacation after, I think it was the 26th, um, then uh, we have asked him if he could come up with an estimate for that. So, um, you know, I, I understand the frustrations, but um, we really do there, you know, there's been site visits, there's been a plan and there is an estimate. So it's just about, you know, kind of writing that check at this point. <laughs> so I appreciate the comment though. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you. And you did point out, Sarah, that the plans that you were working on were the longer term plans, which are, are very robust. And, you know, I think that the public will like to see them and they will be uh, positively received. And I just want a, a, a point of clarification, and then Richard, I, I would like to hear what you what you think. But um, Eli, the RCAA, I believe we just said a little while ago that the city was willing to fund that. I just wanted to confirm because Sarah may not have heard that through the Zoom, but um, but the city will fund that now. We but we just decided that, that right? Yeah. It, and, and as soon as uh, they had presented, um, actually, which was under our consent agenda. As soon as uh, RCAA had presented about the Trinidad had trail steps, uh, RCAA says uh, we need a contract. So then we contacted the Mitchell Law Firm and they said uh, we need to get a conflict of interest All right. uh, waiver of disclosure right. because they represent both entities. Okay. Uh, so what I'm noting here, and maybe I would suggest possibly revisiting it uh, you know, after we finish this item, or at least towards the end, was the consent agenda conflict of interest waiver disclosure for Mitchell Law Firm between the City of Trinidad and RCAA for the Trinidad Head Trail Repair Project to, to say that uh, uh, that we wanted also for the Axel Ingram Memorial Trail. So okay. we can prepare the contract for that. Yeah, we can have to bring that it back. And, yeah. and, and go, so we'll go back. And so, so that's just a little housekeeping, Sarah, that we need to do. Um, and I just want to clarify one more thing. I'm sorry, Richard, but at the RCAA, this this work that we're doing is is clearing the traditional path uh, from from vegetation, uh, but it doesn't actually create the short term trail. That would be the next step, correct? Yes, that's correct. Is that correct? Okay. Yeah. Well, so that I mean, we when we originally got the proposal from RCAA, we were hoping that was the short term solution. Um, but um, Steve Allen and Eli went and took a closer look at the base of the bluff and um, Steve, yeah. it's Steve's opinion that more is going to be needed at the base. So the, the proposal from RCAA is enough to get people from the existing trail to the where it drops off on the bluff. And, but we still need to figure out the way to get the last mile, the basically. Yeah, with the short okay. term. That's for the short That's term. The short term. And yeah. that would it, does that include steps on that vegetation remove portion or there are no steps needed kind of thing? No, the vegetation doesn't have the steps. Okay. Included. However, uh, once they clear the vegetation and can see what the trail looks like, uh, both our city engineer and our CAA have indicated that there is a, a wet area where some water goes across and may need some kind of a footbridge. So that will need to be assessed. Right, a little place. stream right there. Yeah. Richard, go ahead. I have a couple more things, but I'm, I'd like to hear what you have to say. Absolutely, no problem. I, in fact, I appreciate this discussion. Um, I just wanted to make a couple of comments. First of all, um, I wanted to just draw your attention if you haven't already to the letter that was written by our chair uh, that's in the uh, public comments. And I think that 
is a pretty good summary of what we have been working last year and a half. And um, as you can, well, you can't tell, but the four uh, planning commissioners that were able to attend tonight, Aaron is fighting the fire center, so he can't be here, but the other four are here. And, and you've already heard from Tristan and perhaps the other uh, members of the commission would like to speak as well. Um, First of all, I, I want to just reemphasize that throughout this whole process, we have really appreciated the effort that staff has put into this. I, I recognize um, that this is something that is very complicated and yet very simple. And uh, what I mean by that is that there's a lot of moving parts to it, a lot of organizations, different entities that are involved. In it, but uh, it, from a simplicity standpoint, all we're asking for is to get a trail down to the beach, you know. So it's 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 very kind of a convoluted issue, um, but um, the, well, just in summary, with respect to why we um, uh, decided not to uh, approve the CVP for extension, was uh, a, a somewhat of a feeling of frustration in that. While we have certain uh, authority and certain accountability and certain tasks that we can perform, there is nothing that we can do in this case uh, where the city council uh, has the wherewithal to be able to provide the resources and the actions to make this happen. And so our intent was to hopefully raise it uh, to the city council level bring it to the public in a more public arena than perhaps uh, that uh, we would be able to do at the uh, planning commission level and really try to get, use the expression, some fire under, the, under this thing and get it going. And um, I think we all recognize that it is a, like I said, a, a, a project that has a lot of moving parts, a lot of entities in it. But uh, it, we, it's very important that um, we stay focused on it, and we really felt that we needed to make a statement, a statement in bringing this to the council with the intent of getting as much council support, city support as possible so that we can make this thing happen as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Other topic comments or uh, any other planning commissioners who would like to speak? All right, uh, seeing none, I'd like to bring it back to the council. I, I just wanted to mention one thing and then I wanna open it to the council to discuss. Um, I spent, I just disclosed that I spent some time this morning walking down the College Cove Trail and also spent some time on Old Home Beach looking at the toe of the Axel Lindgren Memorial Trail. And I think, you know, I'm not an engineer, but I think we could, we should, we should have someone who is look at the at, at the College Cove uh, toe. And thank you, by the way, Anita Thompson, one of our residents recommended this in the letter that she sent to the council. Um, there's a, there's a, uh, a methodology that they've used and I've reached out to the California State Parks uh, person who has supervised the project and hopefully we'll hear from her in the next few days. And we could see if maybe that would be something that would work and that, you know, Taz also would be comfortable with or the tri management team would be comfortable with that it's uh, not invasive, you know, not, not a lot of digging and so forth. So that would, I guess, speak to a, a potential short-term plan. So my proposal would be that we, that we set some milestones for accountability, including a short-term plan and that the short-term plan include the RCAA brush removal, plus maybe some sort of re-engineering of the toe that is non-invasive and you know not a lot of digging and all that kind of stuff, but behind the boulder where it could be potentially uh, protected from wave action. So I just wanted to mention that, that I've had a few of those conversations today, so that I'll just, just close that. So anyway, so what do you guys, uh, what do you guys think after hearing the the information. No, I'm a, still, I get a little, I think I'm clear and then I get confused between short term and long term. Right. And mm -hmm. vegetation removal, which seems to apply to each short term and long term. That's right. 
Yeah. Okay, so I'm hoping I'll I'll get clearer as we talk about it. Yeah, Trevor, yeah, I, I I could jump in, but I think you'd be the best person to kind of describe maybe the short term versus long term scenarios in. Yeah, I, I mean, for the short term, what we're looking for is kind of the minimum necessary to get people safely to the beach. I mean, that, that's kind of the bottom line. And so, you know, vegetation removal, you know, some some sort of, you know, we talked about, you know, kind of simple planks for, for the crossing of, of the wet areas. You know, I, I think that that is is very doable. Um, it, it's a little bit harder at the toe of the slope. Um, and... Um, but, but it's not, I don't think it's a unique problem. Um, you know, I, I think there are people around here, obviously, who have dealt with these kind of unstable trails and erosion on beaches and things like that. So, um, yeah, I think, um, once we can actually see what it looks like, um, you know, and, and a short term solution might be something that, that is removed during the winter. Um, you know, so, you know, we, we do have to think about that. Um, you know, the, the long-term solution is, is more of a, a permanent raised boardwalk kind of, um, you know, that, that will, you know, protect um, the, the resources and keep the public on the trail and increase um, maintenance and that. So, so yeah, so for right now, we're just looking at the minimum necessary to get people safely to the beach. Dr. Steve, do you have anything you want to I just, add? Uh, appreciate all the conversations. Yeah, I think a lot of us really, really seeing uh, what can be done. And it's really nice to see we're working together. So uh, thank you all. I would love to see this open. And one of the things that I really can appreciate is getting some kind of a monthly update that we regularly are getting information so we all can hear what's going on and know that we're not just, that it's not getting pushed aside, that we're hearing every month at our meetings that such and such has happened, that we see uh, what the plans are, and so that we're looking at these plans so we can be satisfied. I just want to be satisfied if things are going on. I can hear that frustration. And uh, I think if we are continually hearing about these things, uh, that would be helpful and also that we are not looking at a year down the road to get this open, that we're looking at it as soon as possible, as soon as they can put this together, that we can get started. So I see this as a, a real positive push to get, get this done and kind of work together as yeah, we're all these groups working together will really be good for the city and the community. I mean, I don't have anything to add that's better than what has already been said. So. I would uh, look to you to make a motion, only because my head is kind of swimming with all the different things that have been said, yeah. but I definitely support um, the planning commission's effort to, in essence, have some action on this. So okay. I want to follow that. I guess I want to follow that lead. I'm gonna um, add a couple of quick things and then I noticed Jackie has her hands up. So I'm gonna go back to public comment for a sec, because I missed that, I apologize. But um, I, I think I what I hear from the Planning Commission is a sense of frustration that I don't want, I don't want specifically, I don't want, for example, Taz, you know, Sarah and Kelly to feel like that's directed at them. I feel like that's directed at at us. Oh, yeah. And and it's, you know, so I just want to kind of make that clear that it's directed at us and that, that we, what I'm hearing from the Planning Commission is we need to have some accountability and some milestones and that the council needs to be um, accountable as well. And so um, so I think we need some milestones. We need we talked about short term versus long term. We also talked about money and we've kind of you know set that aside for just a second. But I think there is a future discussion about grants and and what progress we're making working in partnership with the Tri management team to to get grants to cover some of this work. Um, and I also wanted to just mention that it's consistent what we've been talking about tonight rerouting the trail uh, is consistent with the Shirai management plan so that document the the 200 page you know document all of this is in there so um anyway so i just wanted to mention a, a few things and then um jackie let me get your comments can i weigh in real quick on the budget per yes uh, jackie um, sorry one more second. well just that yeah. that i believe and i'm i we either have 20 or thirty thousand dollars 
accumulated in the trail effort. Can you remind me yeah, okay. that the, the council set aside 10 grand a year. I know the Trinidad head did not come to a very large amount of money to, to repair. What's our approximate balance in that fund, if you will? Yeah, it's, uh, it, again, I, I would just say it's probably close to 30,000. Yeah. But we haven't, of course, spent for the Trinidad head, which will be like about 11,000. Uh, but we do have some additional funding uh, that's uh, available that we could utilize uh, and put towards this effort. And the reason I ask is because RCAA, I think that's the right acronym, um, came in at a much lower cost than I was expecting for this sort of thing. So um, I, I would at least say that the city could commit, you know, continue to commit our, our $10,000 a year trail fund to this. Um, and so that's a, you know, that's a discussion item I think all of us should keep in the back of our head. Instead of just like, gee, let's hope the grant folks who are really talented solve this. We also have about $30,000 set aside for this sort of thing. So anyway, I just wanted to make yeah, sure that folks remember. Yeah, that's a good point, yeah. especially for the short-term project that yeah. would help. The longer one, a longer term, I think is, uh, is, is uh, significantly higher. Sure. But Jackie, did you want to make your comment? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, on behalf of Trinidad Rancheria Tribal Council, um, we do respectfully request government-to-government -government consultation on this project, both short-term and long-term, formally. I have Vice Chair Robert Hemstead on the Zoom call, as well as Councilman James Brown, and they've asked me to put forward this request. Um, the issue is the lack of communication. Communication is siloed. Uh, over and over, Trinidad Rancheria has requested updates on anything to do with the Axel Lindgren Trail. We have not been kept informed. Um, we are happy to attend the Planning Commission meeting next week and gain additional information. And I know, Mary, you said you just now saw the plans, so I understand that. But our request over and over again over the last several years is for what's happening at the tri management team that does not involve the burial and the um, confidential information to come back to Trinidad Rancheria. And that request just seems to fall on deaf ears. And so we don't understand why and what the problem is. Maybe it is has to do with the sensitivity of overall, um, but there's no reason why communication couldn't flow freely, and then we wouldn't have to pause and request government-to-government -government consultation because we don't have the adequate information for our tribal council to respond. So really, <clears throat> excuse me, I really appreciate the complexity, I appreciate everyone's efforts. I know the goal, the, the short-term and the long-term goal is to open the trail, we support that. However, there's a lack of communication, a lack of coordination, a lack of consultation that we continually bring back to your city council. So thank you, we'll submit a formal request, but have to pause and ask for consultation on this. Thank you. Any comments from staff? I'll just say that I think we can do better. Uh, we we'll, we will do better. So, um, any anything anyone wants to add on that? Or okay. All right. Um, I am going to look through here and see a motion we we want to make. I um. I think what we want to do, what page is it on, Trevor? I'm trying to scroll through here. 124. I don't know what pack. Sorry, 124. I, I, I'm on 124. I'm, like, I'm sure that's the same. I have a friend if you'd like me to try to take it. Of course. Yeah. Okay. I just, um, would like to uh, move that we uh, continue the temporary closure of the actual Lingra Memorial Trail uh, due to unsafe conditions. Uh, the trail closure has been closed for one year while the city works on the stakeholders to develop and plan additional rooftop options. 
could I suggest an, an amendment or an addition uh, that it, there be uh, uh, three months, every three months or a six month check in and that action be recommended if sufficient progress has not taken place. Something along those lines. Yeah, I would actually like to, if I'm going to add something to that, I said I'd like to have month, monthly reports. Uh, through the city council. So, uh, and then I like that idea of, you know, if we're not seeing progress, how to put this all together, getting kind of wordy here, but uh, if we're not seeing progress, that we can take some kind of action as a, as, an as a council. Is that we can reassess our motion. Yes. I think that's like a crazy motion. What am I, how am I doing? And, <laughs> and I'm just going to say, I'd like it to be in writing too that we commit trail money to this project. <laughs> Got a lot to say. Okay. I mean, those yeah. are the those are the key elements that keep coming up. There's monthly check in. Yeah, uh, and the monthly check ins. I mean, it's it's milestones, right? It's like yes. we're just yeah. we're checking yeah. for accountability on on um, spe specific things. So I guess we're asking for a plan, like That's a project. Gabe Scott. Gabe, you... uh, before Gabe okay. says that, uh, I, I was just going to suggest instead of saying the one year to say by Memorial Day, which is a shorter period. I heard nine months uh, is a as a likely window, right. Right. Um, and I think that's where the monthly yeah. uh, check ins would keep us on point. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I hate to do this, but I'd also like to add that the city will commit resources in terms of staff time oh, or grant funding. Uh, we got a lot there. I see. So, so yeah, let's let's come back to that, Richard. I just wanted to make. Uh... Yeah, I, I apologize, but I think it's a point of order. I think that you yes. also need to include very specifically that you are approving the CDP. Yes. Okay. Okay. But yeah, thank you. Good catch. That so we need, so to start over, we need to, I guess, <laughs> I just, that we're approving the CDP. It sounds like we said a term of nine months, so, so I need to understand if that's, if we can do that. Yeah. And then, and then milestones monthly at the city council and the city council committing both the trail funds as well as uh, grant writing resources. Is that what I heard? Because like the grant writing resources. Me, yeah, definitely the, like Angela would help basically, yeah. right? I don't know, do we need to put that into this though? I don't know. I think that might, I think the idea is I think we want to yeah. show that what, what we're yes. willing to commit, right? So if you commit, staff time to at least pursue funding that could by definition mean that something else is put down like this is prioritized right so and i'm gonna i could take a stab at it only just because i took notes or less work. i didn't know if dave might be able to he's been writing for john <laughs> about what he mm -hmm. if we okay. i'm writing but <clears throat> i didn't see you i'm looking for what you read it was, yeah, yeah this is page 127. This discussion yeah. item three. And in I, in I, today's I, packet, for anyone in the public that yeah, wants to follow along as well. It was a cover page. Yeah. So, yes. Steve, do you I, want I to try? I'm 24 to 28, but I'm not sure I want to try it exactly the same. Let me, let me see, and please, um, now, I said I was in the fog, and apparently it's clear. So, quick. <laughs> I'm, 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 I write quick before I forget what I'm doing. Um, I mo make a motion that we approve the CDP. And I'm not going to refer all the numbers and everything, but uh, that we, as a city, dedicate trail funding to this project, that we dedicate staff time to pursuing, to finding additional grant funding, the long-term fix, that we have monthly updates at every council meeting in the staff report on the progress, and that we set Memorial Day as an opening day target date, uh, 2025. I get it all? Yeah, yeah, I believe so. The only question I have is we're going to have monthly ch uh, ch check ins, but that doesn't suggest that if, if we're not moving, we're going to do something about it. Is that necessary to? I would say that if we're not going to achieve our Memorial Day opening day and if we're not getting any money or so on, you know what I mean? If yeah. we're not seeing progress, progress towards all these things, then that's the point is to, is to pivot, I think. I mean, but we it doesn't explicitly. need to be in motion. Okay. Tips part. We'll do that. If you want it? You can add that. I mean, yeah, with uh, we'll, we'll, the monthly check-ins to monthly check-ins yeah. and assessment. Yeah, that sounds good. And the only thing, short-term versus long-term. Um, let's let's just leave that. It doesn't need to be in the motion, but I just like to park the concept that. 
that as we are looking at, as we're having these monthly meetings, we'll be looking for a short-term solution and, and then the longer-term one. Um, I mean, I, I just want to make, I, I think to Steve's point, what I've heard from the public and other, and just in my travels is that this is, this wasn't a priority for the council, but it, it, opening this trail is a priority for the council. Trails are a priority for the council. So opening it anyway. directly. I just want to say yes. opening it directly. We could open it yes. today well, right. and our insurance will go through the roof. Right. So, right. And people will get hurt. Yeah. <laughs> So should we have like the game? Game we got this week. Yeah, we got this one. So we can yeah. second it. Well, and just to clarify, I'm gonna read it back. Closure a year, nine months. Memorial yeah. Day, 2025. So yeah. until yes. the closure is until Memorial Day. Okay. Charter. Okay. Yeah. So the approval of the CDP, which is the uh, appeal of the Planning Commission's denial of the post development permit. The continued temporary closure of the Oxley Memorial Trail with additional four additional conditions. One, to commit funding to the project. Two, to dedicate grant staff to for search for funding. Three, monthly progress reports and assessments to the city council. And four, set memorial date 2025 as a target date. Beautiful. Sounds perfect. And I will second the motion. Oh, I was going to second it. <laughs> it's so long ago, I forgot it. But I forgot it was. <laughs> sorry, sorry, everyone. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank you. I, I want to thank um, the Tri Ancestral Society for joining us this evening, the Rancheria for their insights and input. The Planning Commission, um, you know, thank you guys very much, and and we apologize for the frustration. And we will stay on top of this. So we really appreciate it bringing it to us. I request I mentioned either now or after yes. the next item. Just take it for a quick break. Bio break. For sure. Yes. Okay. So the council would like to take a 10 minute bio break and we will resume at uh, 8 17. This is one of those where it's up there. I think it's like. Never don't stop the point. I was like, am I supposed to stop or am I not supposed to? Like, I want to vote to Never deny to the appeal of the approval of the, like, what are we doing? Yeah. That's why I wanted to get the verbiage. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the old papers are smart. Oh, they may have had a hundred. Yeah. 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 Yeah, <laughs> 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 We can see the chairs. You guys need to stop yeah. putting us in the middle. Yeah. We don't have to do anything. Yeah. We'll take down the message of the talk. It's just like that. It's never with the camp forever. Recording stopped. I am sorry. I should not have gotten it. But RCA, as I said, because at first I was like, hmm, the process is good for a I haven't been to one in so long. Well, I think Anyway, it just seems like I was grateful that 
Recording in progress. All right, I think we're uh, just about uh, out of time for our break. <laughs> so we will go to item number four, which is uh, the first reading of Ordinance 2024-02 and adoption of resolution 2024-14 zoning and general plan amendment request to change the zoning and general plan designations of the property uh, from uh, this is property at 12 Berry Road to change it from PR to SR from public and local just to suburban residential. So um, let me turn it over to staff for this. Great. All right, thank you. Um, so, um, the, you know, the, uh, to me, this is a fairly simple project. Um, it does have some moving parts because it involves a uh, ordinance and the resolution. Um, the resolution is to amend the general plan, land use designation, um, and the ordinance is to amend the zoning map. Um, if I had, if I had thought about it a little sooner, I might have uh, seen if we could get our updated map certified because I had to, you know, it's like using whiteout on these <laughs> maps from the seventies. I'm not very good at it. I apologize, but the, this is what's certified. Uh, so, you know, I think uh, this is a pattern we've seen with the um, several of the churches in, in town have been, you know, abandoned by, by the religious organizations um, for various reasons and they fold into individual ownership. Um, so this is one of those churches. It was vacant for several years um, before it was purchased by the applicants. Um, it has an attached apartment on the church, um, and the applicants would like to convert the church into a residence and maintain the apartment as an ADU. Um, that is an allowable use in the SR zone, but not in the PR zone. So it's owned public and religious currently. Um, the only residential use in the public and religious zone is a caretaker unit. Um, so that's what they want to do is not consistent. Um, but uh, the surrounding properties are all zoned um, suburban residential. So this, this rezoning would be um, consistent with the neighborhood. Um, essentially, it's, it's a down zoning, which is why it's fairly simple to me, um, because it, it allows a, a narrower range of uses at a lower density. Um, you know, in our zone, you could have parks and museums and community centers and you know all, all sorts of different things. So. Um, so it's a, it's a simpler zone. Um, one of the complicating factors with this um, was that we, we found that there was a wetland on, on site. Um, it's a little bit east of, of the existing church. So it took a little time to get that mapped and lined up and they had to, they had a septic system design that had to be moved. Um, you know, and getting a site plan, the, the mapping for the wetland wasn't fitting on the site plan. So it, it just all took, a, took some time to, to get it all together. Um, and you know where the any new development will maintain a, a 50 foot setback from from the wetland. It's an old it appears to be an old drainage channel, actually. So, um, and uh, this was referred to the resource agencies, Coastal Commission, Department of Fish and Wildlife. Department of Fish and Wildlife went out to the site and checked it out. Um, didn't have any any additional concerns. Um, this approval tonight is is just the rezone. So. Um, once this, this will have to go to the Coastal Commission for certification, um, and once the Coastal Commission approves it, then the applicants can come get a permit for um, the, the septic system and the second container. So, um, 
Um, they'll they'll be back, but that'll just be at the planning commission level for this. Um, an amendment requires uh, action by the planning commission, which they recommended approval unanimously to the council, um, and so staff is also recommending uh, approval of the rezone. Um, and then next month um, on the consent agenda, we can have the second reading as well as the resolution for submitting this list of questions. Any questions from the council? I think there was something, a comment about wetlands are not addressed in the general plan currently. Is that what you were saying? Do, is there a plan to address it? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. And you know, under, uh, you know, the, the, the city's LCP was the first mistake to be certified. So it's, it's deficient in, you know, se several things. Um, and, you know, it has a right period setback. Um, the Coastal Act protects um, what they term now as environmentally sensitive habitat areas. So, um, you know, that might be rare plants, it might be, um, you know, endangered species habitat, it might be um, riparian areas, wetlands. So they all sort of fall under that environmentally sensitive habitat area. And so definitely in our general plan update, if you look at the conservation element, there's quite a few policies. Great. Thank you. Uh, any public comments or questions regarding this project? Okay, then I will bring it back to the council. Is there a uh, let's see, do we, this first reading, I move that we approve the first reading of ordinance 2024-02 and adoption of resolution 2024-14. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Trevor. Uh, let's see. So we are on, we skipped number five because we already discussed that. So we are on number six, discussion decision regarding the revised ballot wording previously adopted in resolution 2024-08. So this is the, is this for measure L, is this the new wording for that? So that'll be, it looks like, uh, Sorry, I have to fast forward here to see what page this is on. Hundred and something. Yeah, I'm going through the uh, Humsan agreement. Yeah, it's two hundred and something. Right. <laughs> Big there. It would be the actual wording is. Yeah, I'm fine with Gabe, are you? I got it, yeah, 217 in the packet that I, the most recent packet. Anyway, okay. I can, I can, I can sum up. But you did a pretty good job. But it's interesting, we were running with the same ballot measure language for the last three, maybe four elections. My scans took a look at it this time. Maybe, maybe the sun was shining through his office a different way or something, but he just, it, it dawned on him that, <laughs> that instead of using Three quarters of a cent. Oh, right. With three slash four cent. He liked it better with 0 0.05 percent. 0 0.075. I'm sorry, 0 0.075 percent transaction in use tax to be adopted in the city. So he does still start the ballot measure, shall a three dash quarters of one percent, and he puts it in parentheses 0 0.05 percent. Uh, point zero seven five percent. So it really just boiled down to the way he looked at it and he said, you know what, this is a better wording. So we verified with the county elections office who we sent this original resolution to a month ago that they wouldn't take issue because we haven't created the ballot. Uh, we're going to work on that in September. <clears throat> and Nicole Goldbach, who's the elections manager, said, hey, whatever you guys decide, go for it. We haven't created the ballot. So for housekeeping, I thought it would be nice since we do oftentimes every four years if this continues we do some copying and pasting to continue and make it a little easier for us to go through the process that if there was a paper trail showing the wording change so that it is in a couple of years if the council decides to do it again like well, how do we change the wording on this after all so that's why it's before you tonight just to 
there's no, no substantive change whatsoever. It's just a matter of perception and we, we thought it would be good to have a revised resolution uh, before the council formally adopted. Okay. And and parenthetically, it says 0 0.075. That needs to be 0 0.75. 0 0.75% is is 75% of a one. Right. So right now you have it at, at 75 thousandths instead of 75. I, I it's listed on the same things. Huh? It's listed both ways. One of them is point. Look, I zero failed seven math four three. times in college. This is my day to shine. <laughs> I wrote the title of the agenda at 0.75, and it shows it shows in the um yeah, it needs to be points it, it's 0.75. 0.75. And and Mr. Gans gave gave us the zero point seven five. Oh. And generally when it comes from the higher level authority brass, I just say okay. So yeah, I will they're the same orders of one percent so probably and then just point yeah, point seven five, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah points. We're all in so so with the proposed acts action, well, let me, any other comments or questions about this? And then any public comments or questions? Okay, I see none. So bringing it back and just saying the proposed action here would be to adopt the revised resolution calling for an election on a proposal to continue the city of Trinidad's 0.75% sales tax and use tax for four years measure L. So I, so move. Yeah. And um, is there a second? Second, as okay. long as everything Mr. said 0. 0.75. Okay. So yes. in the language proposed on this new resolution to be put forth, forth before the voters, it shall say, shall a three quarters of 1% and then parentheses. Oh, so you want to? 75? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. It's yep. 0. 0.75. I, I it's yield the tax. So 0. 0.75%. Yeah. I got you. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll mention this to Mr. Yeah. And resolu resolution 2024 08 has the 0. 0.75 mm -hmm. in the title. Yeah. Let's see if there's anywhere else that it. Uh, yeah, then, so the actual proposed well, action then, is correct. But... Yeah, but then now, therefore, it be resolved. Number one in bold is 0. 0.075. So we need to get rid of that 0. 0.075. In number one of the now. Yeah. Or shall be a resolved thing. Yeah. Did you check the resolution too, Steve? Did you? Is it okay in there? That's what I'm looking at. Is so we're whereas, yeah. It says 0. 0.75. All the whereases are fine, but it's the therefore be it resolved. And now therefore it be it resolved. Number one in bold shall a three quarters of one percent parentheses 0. 0.075 needs mm -hmm. to be. 0.75. I'll communicate that to us. So that's what you're approving. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. So we're approving quite the 0.75 percent versus what we used to have, the three quarters of a percent. So it's just a change in nomenclature. So. Uh, I don't remember who made that. Did I made the motion? I Did seconded it. And yeah. Steve seconded it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. That was. We're starting to get tired. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I think. Okay. The next one is discussion yeah, well, decision regarding first reading of ordinance 2024, extending the 0.75% transactions and use tax for general purposes to continue to be administered by the California Department of Tax and fee administration. So, so what's this one, Gabe? Well, this is there's an ordinance on the books that authorizes the city to collect this tax, the full ordinance. It's several. Years. So when, when the city continues that tax, the amendment to that ordinance effectively amends termination date. So this ordinance an abbreviated amendment to the long ordinance, ordinance by saying if the voters approve it, CDTFA, California Department of Tax and Fee Administration, please don't terminate it continuing. So it's, it's a band aid, you know, for that termination process. So by the council adopting this ordinance tonight, 
It's basically saying if the voters approve it, this ordinance will be effective. I see. Okay. Not terminating, but rather extending the date beyond March 31st, 2025 for four issues. Okay. And it's the first reading in this and case. This is the first reading. It'll be on consent for the next uh, September meeting. And then it would be essentially parked until the result until of the election. Valid. Yep. Okay. All right. Any questions or comments on this one, Council? Any questions or comments from the public? All right. Back to the Council. Would anyone like to make a motion? I move that we accept the first reading of the ordinance 2024 03, extending the 0.75% transactions and use tax for the general purposes to continue to be administered by the California Department of Tax and Fee Administration. All right. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So then we are on. Eight. Uh, that, uh, which one are we on? Eight. Yeah. Yeah. Review just uh, the discussion decision of the sales tax and partial analysis from the city attorney and an argument in favor of Measure L prepared for council consideration. So this is where we rewrote uh, the verbiage <laughs> for Measure L, and we need the whole council to um, kind of read and approve it. And it's uh, two twenty six, page two twenty six, right, Gabe? It, it, Please. The impartial analysis is not part of, it's not really a debatable council action tonight. It was just okay. thrown in because when, in this case, we're asking if any other council members would like to endorse the argument in favor. So there wasn't any motion made in the past several months at all to, I don't believe, to delegate one person on the council to write that it's just traditionally customarily been a council member or two took a stab at it and then they it was just the argument in favor without question but in this case and in some cases they brought it forward to the council forum to ask if other councils would like to um, support it and endorse it so this is your opportunity if you'd like to weigh in as a group to show the community, because it will say endorsed by all council members, um, that you support this. I support it. Yeah, I support it. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So we all support it. Yeah, and, and ideally you'll have a, a vote so that this way we can have it officially uh, on record that, uh, that at a meeting that the council took that action so people wouldn't think that, you know, Brown just Brown Act is yeah. violating. So bring it to a vote. Yeah. We'll yeah. State, we state in it for the five members or? Oh, that's a good point. Since Jack's not here. Right. So for the five members of the group. Well, and it'll, sh the record will show that Jack wasn't here. Yeah. Can he approve by some other means or does it really matter? Well, that's a good question. That's what I was wondering. Can he? Can you ask him offline, or it, it needs to be here, right? I would think it should be here. Um, in yeah. The, in the meeting. And I think the, the the vote can clearly state, you know, Tuttle absent. We can have that on. The you know, or he you didn't just put our name. He didn't abstain, and he didn't vote no. He was simply not in the meeting, so he couldn't have voted. Okay. All right. So, uh, all those in favor of uh, supporting uh, Measure L. Aye. 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 Okay, we are moving right along. And um, now Gabe has to take notes, so I don't want to go too fast. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so the next one is number nine. So that's the update, uh, the calendar deadline update for sales tax and the city council election. Don't leave the very curious. This guy's going to run away. Hi, Sarah, did you say something? Just, Sorry, oh, so I don't know how I unmuted. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no worries. If you have any comments, just feel free to shout out. There's not that many people left. So, <laughs> um, so let's see. So this is the, um, you know, one of the things I wanted to ask you about, Gabe, on, on number nine is about the city council election. So we're going to talk about that um, and the deadlines and things is my understanding is we have two seats available and we only have one candidate right now. And I didn't know if that impacted us 
in other ways that are not obvious, like as it pertains to the sales tax measure or, you know. No, okay. nothing, nothing significant would be impacted by not having those counts, the full proceeding counts. However, today, at the last minute, we have interest from two people. Oh, good. Okay. So, and those, uh, good. Can you, know, you say at, who? At this, I mean, there's, there's, when the candidate takes out papers, they become public. Yeah. Whether they turn them in or not. You know, and then when the press calls, they always ask, who's who's taking out papers? You know, and they, they want names. Um, I, we always tell them they haven't submitted their papers yet, but they took out the papers. Oh, once so, they do, it's public though, right? It is public. I see. Yeah, so Bryce Kenny submitted, uh, and he had, I certified, I had his, nomination signature certified today. So the county elections office has certified everybody that he has, that nominated him. So he is a ready to go candidate. Uh, and then today, before this meeting began, I had two conversations with two individuals. Um, Andrew Davis. Yeah. Did he? And, yeah, yeah. Down. And uh, Carrie, I think you pronounced her name, Bariella, I think, I believe, on, on um, Underwood. So, I don't discourage anyone from 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 taking the papers. I mentioned to Carrie, she said, I, I'm here because I heard, you know, there was need. Has the date passed or how does that well, work? Well, because the two of you uh, as incumbents did not file by the deadline of Friday. August 9th, Friday, the deadline was extended until tomorrow. Just so oh, tomorrow. I see. Okay. It's okay. an extension period if the incumbents do not file. Yeah. yeah. So we're in that extension period right now. And, um, Oh. Those individuals have their work cut out for them. They have until, I mean, frankly, my deadline was yesterday, was today. Oh. You know, however, the technical deadline is tomorrow. So it puts me in a little bit of a hot seat because now I have to hustle. I have to drop everything and hustle all the papers that they turn in tomorrow to the county elections office. If they turn them in. If they yeah. turn them in to get them certified. Yeah. And they don't certify right on the spot. They take time too. So we all have a little bit of time need. Yeah. This would have been a great place to get signatures. I know. So, do they, do they right. have to have signatures by tomorrow? Yeah, they have to have them Is by today. Ten or fifteen. And I told them both. I said because they both came in like after, you know, or whatever time it was. One of them was at five thirty tonight. Now, and I gave her the papers, and they gave them both papers, and I said, "You guys get this to me by ten or eleven tomorrow, and I have to drive them to the elections office. They're closed from twelve to one." So we might not know officially until after one o'clock tomorrow if you're a candidate. Now we might end up having three for two. Because Big problem apparently it's yeah. not it's right. not a bad problem. To, yeah, exactly. Great. And I would never say to someone, oh, we already have some we have it filled, even yeah, I was we have a full council. So yeah. so we shall see. The, the okay. still out on this but, one and it, until the bell tolls tomorrow at five jack minutes. and i put our names in again just to <laughs> kind of fuck things Mix it up <laughs> no oops <laughs> no i'm both listening I, I don't think you're qualified to do it since you didn't do it by the night oh good, right. I'm I'm not good. Good. i've been telling people i'm unqualified now it's a yeah point. so um, so that's so where we're at so this should say okay. breckenridge yeah, yeah. yeah. It, gabe can you correct Oh, include. I, do I need to put uh, oh, Kelly? Yeah, it, yeah, Kelly yeah. Breckenridge. The, the mayor, the mayor is excellent, but <laughs> no, I was just gonna say after. I'll, I'll fix that. Twice the work. I'll fix that. So oh, thank you. So really, I mean, we, tomorrow will be the day we know what the ballots going. That's great though that we have that we have people that cash now. I know Bryce has been on the council for at least once, maybe twice. Eighties, eighty, late eighties, early nineties. Was he mayor, yeah. Gabe? I, well, he tried. I don't know if he got it, but he, he I have a button that says Bryce from mayor. Oh. Like from 1986 or something. Oh, know. okay. Wow. Yeah. Jan, Jan said that. Good for him. The paperwork that he signed that he was mayor. Oh, yeah, you're yeah. right. You're right. He's a mayor. That's yeah. here I graduated. I've seen those documents. Oh, so yeah. that's where we're at right now. And we we even uh, even uh, Anton had someone approach him today who lives outside the city oh. who wanted to run also. Yeah. So we have 
Oh, we created a little bit of extra interest That's at the amazing. end. Yeah. A little late. You know, I was, yeah, I mean, I was thinking about that today that had we thought of that early enough i mean i don't know if that's if that's something we could do down the road to say that there could be one counselor from the greater the to, to no, can we we can't the planning okay. commission you can but i don't yes. think the city council okay. i think that's that i was wondering that's yeah. Yeah. all right well that answers that. it's an incentive to annex yeah yes. there you go quick we'll do run the a city. quick annex because i reached out to <laughs> somebody today and they were like, <laughs> yeah, I reached out to someone today. I didn't know Langford was so, you know, chopped it's up. It's a mix. It's chopped up. Yeah, it's chopped up. And so I reached out to someone who wasn't there. So this month is, is we're going to close the chapter on the deadlines that we lose yeah. sleep over. I, I, yeah. just, I heard today, I, I was talking to the elections folks, and there was one city that didn't get their bond measure documents in time oh, or something yeah. and you know that's really a pain that's a lot of work and i and i, and I yeah. to, to miss breckenridge's comments today about the minutes like i i when i get into these kind of months i have to prioritize i'm like no sales tax for the next couple of years until we have a special election or you know and that's something that i've been really losing sleep over is these election deadlines because uh you know to screw that up it, it captured the city so the good news is is that these election deadlines are going to they're peaking right now this week. Uh, there will be an opportunity for the community to file rebuttals to the arguments in favor to the argument in favor because we do not have an argument against. Yeah. So the ballot right now will show the, the voter information uh, pamphlet will show the impartial analysis and the uh, argument in favor. Whoever's name ends up being on the ballot, and we will know by the end of the day. Yeah. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, and then uh, September, October, November are. Uh, Basically, when we're preparing the ballot. Yeah. So once we get through August here, we a little bit of the deadlines behind and, um, and you just look forward, you know, co coast for a month or two. So that's all the, that's all I have to report. Thank you. And we'll see how things go tomorrow night. Yeah. Mm. That will be exciting. Yeah, right. I hope they get their signatures. If they, if they decide to, it would be a shame not to get signatures. Like I've made the commitment, it's a huge decision. And not to have the 10 signatures would be tough. I so, they, yeah, they can always reach out. Yeah. I'm happy to sign. For, yes, I know those. We all know where they live. Let's go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I will go now. Right next to the show. No, that's a brown. All right. Uh, future, <laughs> future agenda items. Anything anybody want to tee up? Right. I just think we can't think of it right uh, now. Oh, Sarah has a comment. Oh, Sarah, please. We can Hi. need something to uh, keep us on the straight and narrow here. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I did want to request that um, maybe the government to government policy uh, be put on for review um, and possibly have uh, the city's attorney, Russ Gans, in attendance to answer questions, because I think that there was some misspeaking earlier on what um, government to government meetings are supposed to cover um, and what confidential information is supposed to be covered. Uh, I don't believe that it's just graves. I believe that it's all cultural resources. And I also, um, I also believe that, uh, that to request a government to government meeting um, is to um, discuss concerns about safety of cultural resources or the possibility of cultural resources um, and not to um, discuss or, you know, provide complaints or, um, you know, about other meetings that are happening. And so, but, you know, I, I don't want to give interpretation. Um, and so um, I think it would be a good refresher for all of us um, you know, the public um, and, you know, possibly city council, uh, just to get clarification from from the city's own attorney, since this was such a big issue um, and it was, you know, kind of being abused there um, for a number of years. Uh, and, you know, and after the change, um, you know, I don't know how much it's been used, but, um, but I think it, it might be helpful to get that clarification from your own attorney. I think that's a great idea. And I would, yeah. I would uh, add to that, Sarah. The the I think the council might benefit in the in the G to G policy to have a little 
more detailed guidance on what to report out because I agree that it's not, um, it's not, that part is a little, having had to report out for years, um, I would have liked a little more guidance on what is reportable and, and what is not so that it's not up to each individual government to government meeting to determine what's reportable, if that makes sense. Um, and Russ is the one that designed that, that G to G uh, policy. So he has good understanding and good base. So I agree with that. Yeah. It'd be nice That's to get that one. back. Yeah. Clearly I need the, the refresher. So, okay. So uh, other uh, future topics? Any, do we have anything on the water uh, rate mm. change? It, that's going out to could. out to public comment for 45 days or something. Yeah, oh, yeah. it'll be on the agenda September 10th. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then where are we with the general plan? We haven't seen an element from the general. Yeah. I know that the council, the commission is is always busy, right? We saw it tonight. They've had quite a bit of activity, but any any elements that might be ready? And I know that we've also been waiting on the coastal commission, but yeah, they, they don't have anything ready for us yet. Okay. It would have been ideal if we could have paused earlier and asked the two or four planning commissioners yeah. and Trevor. Yeah. So we'll just add it to future yeah. items and yeah. to Steve because yeah. I was wondering the same. Yeah. And I was going to ask Trevor, but we were right. And I and last last we heard things. from Trevor, she had at least three elements at the Coastal Commission for quite some for time. For a while now. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Mike Wilson is our our county supervisor who's on the Coastal Commission. So. Maybe a concerted effort from the city to Mike as a commissioner saying, you know, we're in, we're not your, well, we're in the county. Can we please see the Coastal Commission act on some of these yeah. elements? But we need, you know, specific language so that Trevor could say this was submitted on this day and this time. But maybe that's something that the, that the city could ask Mike as a, a Coastal Commissioner to get this thing moved up the docket a little bit. We've been waiting a long time for this. Yeah. Yep. By the time it gets approved, it it, it could already be obsolete. Some of it, just given what. There'll be time for the next. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think that's it then. Uh, we are officially adjourned. Uh, thanks again for everyone who's hung in. Sarah, thanks for joining us.